Hello everyone, welcome to What If Issei Was Neglected and Becomes the God of Creation and Destruction Part 5. Before we start please go support Ethan1939 for writing that awesome fanfic, now let's begin. This is the translated version I made, there will be some wrong he or she calling here because it's translated so let me clear this essay is a male in this story. Part 20 Rating Game Gentlemen, ladies, I have made a decision, I have reflected, and I am going to give Yuri an ending that is neither good nor bad. I have made this decision because I don't want to see any of you complain or not like it, because of the ending that I will give it, and also because I couldn't decide whether to forgive her or not, so I hope you like my decision. And for those who voted, well it was a tie 3 and 3, so I will try to take your votes into account as well. Well without further filler let the chapter begin. Rias. Issei please help us win the next rating game bound together to his entire entourage. Issei. He. Confused. Azara. Please, yes, yes trying to make a cute face to convince his brother. Issei. I have no idea what they're talking about. Rias. Well let's say that we are in a kind of tournament. Issei. Like in Dragon Ball Super. Azara. Similar and good, a few weeks ago before the trip to Tokyo we faced Sona's entourage, and now we have to fight Sereog. Issei. Who? Rias. He is one of the strongest young demons in the underworld, he is also a cousin of mine. Issei. And he is so strong that you alone can't defeat him. Rias. According to what they say, it can rival Tiamat, that's why we ask for your help. Hiba. It hurts us to even say it so do you agree or not? Issei. Sigh well I guess I can't let my wives get hurt by an idiot. The girls just smiled at what Issei said and hugged him. Rias. Well the rating game will be in a week, so we have to train. Issei. Well, anyway, I already plan to train today with someone special, so you guys will have to do it alone. You. And who will he train with? Issei. This time it's none of your business, little brother, goodbye while well, he gave his girls a kiss and disappeared into his shadow with Yui and Lin. Hiba. Well, if he doesn't tell us, he must be someone strong. Rias. I hope it's not a girl. All. Yes, I'm skip with Issei. Issei was in the underworld, specifically in the office of a certain Mayu that we all love very much. Issei. You're late Azazel looking at the fallen one. Azazel. He finally calls me by my name looking at Issei. Issei. That's what you asked me to do this favor for me, you remember that, don't you? Azazel. Haha yes I know, but it's still very nice to hear my name again, and even more so living off of you with a mocking smile. Issei. Don't tempt me to kill you sighing well, where is he? Azazel. Come with me making a magic circle. Issei alone went with him, and they were both transported by a magic circle. That same night they were both alone in an abandoned parking lot waiting for someone. Issei. We already spent the whole day here, where is it something already boring? Azazel. Don't despair, he's very lazy sighing I'm surprised he's even accepted there. They both just waited a while longer, and after a few minutes a small dimensional crack appeared, and Yu Long emerged from it, along with Sun Wukong. SW. Well we're here looking at both see you again boy. Issei. Hello old man looking at the monkey man with a smile don't you think you took too long? SW. Well I was very tired yawning in fact I didn't come, but looking at Issei with a smile, I only came to train and see the potential of the new god and demon king. Azazel. Well hello old monkey, well can you train the boy? SW. Sure, and if he progresses as quickly as you told me, I'm sure that in a few weeks he will quickly surpass me. Azazel. Well, I'm leaving, you can go train now disappearing in a magic circle. SW. Well come on boy riding on top of the dragon, Issei. Hi, Issei just climbed on top of the green dragon with the old monkey, and then they disappeared into the dimensional rift. But Issei's companions, they only trained with rigorous training that Issei had previously prepared for them. Hiba and Yu fraught each other masterfully, and the others practiced magic and also did physical training. Rias. It's good that he's going to help us in the game rating he said happily. Zenovia. Yes, it will be of great help. Akeno. Yes, but we also have to work hard, Ice Khan can't do all the work for us. Azara. Yes, we have to show that we are also strong, and also maybe he will reward us for our efforts he said with a blush and a perverted smile. The girls also blushed and became even more motivated by what the brunette said. But Issei. Issei came out of the dimensional crack with the old monkey, and when he looked closely around him, he could see a desolate beach next to a still very large and lush forest, and it also had some very large mountains. SW. Well guys we arrived, Azazel told me that you like lonely places like the forests, but I prefer the beaches, you know how hot cold drinks, beautiful girls in bathing suits Jojoho. Issei. This old man reminds me of Auden. Issei. Man, you told me that we were going to train, not see girls in bikinis. SW. And we will do that, although unfortunately there are no girls in swimsuits, somewhat discouraging this place is an extreme small training place, during the day a scorching sun, during the night an extreme cold, and there are also horrendous predators that will try to hunt day and night. Issei. 
I understand looking at the beach and why the beach. SW. The sounds of the waves will calm you and help you in your spiritual training. SA. Spiritual training. SW. I already thought you would learn it as you went, but now it's time to train with a smile. During Issei's training the old monkey made him fight against him during the day, and at night Yui and Lin took their necklace forms at the request of Sun Wukong, since he said that he will have to fight the monsters that were hiding in the forests, with only his hands. Yu Long helped him in his spiritual training, and with that she was able to increase his senses even more, and also helped him better control his creations of shadows, light and other things. Time skip rating game day. The Grimmery entourage was nervous since Issei had not yet arrived, and he was his trump card to win the game rating. There he is. Where the hell is Issei? Nervous I hope Abaka, I don't know, is dead or doing something stupid there somewhat worried about the albino. Zenovia. Where is Issei? Arena. Well, I think he's definitely training, he'll surely arrive in a few minutes. There he is. I hope you're right. Bizarra. Come on, we're talking about my oni chan, it's impossible that something could have happened to him. The entourage, after a while, prepared themselves and waited for the game rating to comment, there was no trace of a say, which only made the boys more suspicious. After a few minutes the rating game began Roswiss and Ravel went with Azazel to the VIP area, and they only supported their teammates. The Grimmery entourage went up to a floating city apparently called Agrees, where the rating game would be held there, although they didn't really care about that since everyone was worried about a say, since he wasn't the boy who breaks his promises. Asper. H heights are terrifying hugging Kiba. Kiba. Don't worry, Gasper, remember that if you fall, you should only fly with your wings. Gasper. It's true Gigi, although I'm worried about where Issei Senpai is. You? Yes, us too. Only when they reached the top did the boys see Sereog waiting for them to welcome them along with all the spectators. Sereog. Hello Ria seeing his entourage it seems that this Nephilim guy will not come, what a shame haha <laughs> maybe he got cold feet he said with a somewhat arrogant smile. Ria's. You better shut up before you swallow your word Sereog it would be. Sereog. Ooh what happens if not? That Nephilim guy will appear and hit me ha 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 ha. The girls and boys just wanted to hit the muscular idiot, but suddenly a large dimensional gap appeared on one side of them. Out of the gap came Yu Long and Sun Wukong. Why L? Woof we arrived at old time looking at everyone as they were surprised. SW. Yes, well we arrived faster than normal, the boy learned quickly he said with a smile. Everyone immediately felt a huge pressure in the environment and a great killer instinct coming out of the gap. Inside the crack some footsteps were heard and in a few seconds a hooded man covered in blood, scratches and dust, came out of the crack. When Issei came out of the crack, he only saw Sereog with dead eyes, and in the blink of an eye he appeared in front of him and gave him a tremendous blow that made him fly. Issei. You know, you idiot, if you talk about the devil, he might appear to you looking seriously at where the man crashed. Those present were terrified, others only found it difficult to breathe due to the pressure in the air, and some fell to their knees due to how heavy the atmosphere was. Rias. Ice. Rias and his companions only hugged the albino since they had worried about him. They say. Hello guys, sorry for being late, it took me a bit to create a dimensional gap, but it's not bad for my first time. Zenovia. You created that gap. They say. Yes, it took me a little, but I learned quickly with a smile on my face. The girls just smiled when they saw Issei, and the boys just greeted him as always. Sereog. Damn coming out of a small crater that was made when Issei hit me that hurt me. The man only saw Issei with a smile, and Issei only saw him seriously. Issei. That's what you get for speaking ill of a person behind their back, idiot. Sereog. Yes, sorry for underestimating you looking at Issei with a smile, it seems that the rumors of your strength and power were not false, you even created a large dimensional gap for your first time. Issei. You seem strong too ha ha ha, I like fighting with you. Both only sent each other challenging glances and also let out a little of their power to intimidate the other. Sereog. Well I guess we'll settle this on the battlefield, ha 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 goodbye boy Lindus. Issei also turned and left with his companions. Rias. Ice hugging the albino you really came, Issei. Of course, I follow what I say haha. Issei only closed his eyes for a moment and rested on Ria's breasts like his were pillows. Ria's. I I know what's going on. Somewhat blushing because of the boy's action. Issei z z z z z z z z z z z Tiba. He fell asleep. SW. Sorry, he hasn't slept in a week. All. One week. SW. Well, where we trained, the nights were full of predators who tried to eat him more than 100 times, and the poor guy couldn't sleep a day. I also offered him to sleep for a day so that his body wouldn't overexert himself, but he said he had to train. With everything for this day, he is a very dedicated boy and it seems that he loves you a lot too. Why L? If he said more than once that he had to be stronger to protect you, haha ha, this boy makes me proud haha. Ha. The boys, upon hearing this, only became happy and the girls only saw Issei sleeping with a tender and kind smile. 
Giba. Well it's better that we go to the hotel so he can rest carrying a say, but it was obvious that he was having a hard time I I why does he weigh so much? SW. Who I think he still has some weights that he used to train, I thought they were 500 kilograms in total. The boys were just surprised, and Kiba and Yu were just trying to drag the boy, but it was impossible. Yu. Ah we can't do anything ah. He weighs a lot. Yu. Calm down, we'll do it. Both swords took their necklace form and began to control Issei's body like a puppet. Lin. Jiji is kind of funny while moving Issei's legs. Yu. Well it's better that we go now, all. Hi. The boys were just walking around the city while they went to their corresponding hotel. The girls were looking at the beautiful city, and Issei was still asleep while he was controlled by both girls' swords necklaces. In the end they arrived at the hotel and asked to take Issei's weights off and lay him down on one of the hotel beds. Yu. Oof damn those weights are heavy. Giba. Well he had 100 kilograms on each limb and another 100 on his body, it seems that his training was very heavy. Rias. Yes, but apparently he did it for us stroking Issei's hair. Azara. Although sometimes he is cold, you can tell that he loves us a lot, Jiji, that's why I love him. Zenovia. No, that's why we all love him. The girls just nodded happily and just caressed Issei's head like he was still a small dog, and he could only receive the caresses while he was sleeping. Time skip. Issei was waking up and when he did the first thing he saw was. Issei. Breasts looking at the fact that a naked Rias was in front of him more breasts he said when he turned around and saw that on the other side of him, he had Azara's breasts. When Issei got up he could only see all of his naked girls around him and Asia, Kaneko and the twins on his chest. Issei. Yui, Lin are there. The girls just came out from under the sheets also naked and both kissed Issei as a greeting. Yui. Good morning master. Lin. You slept a lot, master. Issei. I fainted, right. Yui. Yes, we both had to control your body to bring you to the hotel, Jiji had already been there for 16 hours, master, but he seemed very calm when sleeping, so we didn't wake you up, Lin. If only we sleep next to you, master snuggling closer to Issei's chest, Issei. Well I feel energetic so it's time to get up. Issei tried to get up, but his other girls just hugged him tighter and prevented him from getting up, and more and more the girls' breasts were placed in his face. Yui. It seems like they don't want to let go, Master Fufufu, and neither do we putting her breasts in Issei's face, Lin. If Master still has to rest also putting her breasts on his face let's go to sleep again. Issei could only blush a little when he felt the softness and validity of his breasts, and Issei was definitely gaining a fetish for breasts, but he just ignored it and went back to sleep. Time skip next day. The next day Issei was able to get up with a lot of energy, and without his weights he felt lighter and stronger. The girls were also very happy to see Issei, and they only talked to him about his training and the rating game. Rias. By the way, the rating game should have been yesterday, but Sereog, knowing that you didn't sleep for a whole week, postponed the fight to today, it seems that he only wants to fight you eyes. Issei. Well I just hope he's strong, I want to try new techniques with him. After an hour of preparation, a dark shadow along with several skeletons in tunics appeared and entered the place, and in the tallest shadow, a skeleton in a priest suit could be seen. Azazel. Vala I never thought you would come Hades don't know. Hades. Well several rumors have spread throughout the supernatural world that also passed through my kingdom, and I came to see if those rumors were true looking at Issei, it's a snotty pleasure bowing a little I'm Hades, rest assured you can use my hells to leave souls condemned. Issei. Well thanks I guess. Hades. Well, I hope the rumors that you are the extremely strong one are real, rest assured that I will bet on you. Issei. Bet. Can you also bet on this type of things? Azazel. Yes, didn't they tell you? Haha <laughs> I also bet on you so don't even think about losing haha <laughs> he said with a smile. After that Hades just said goodbye and left with his skeletons. Azazel. I'm surprised he told you that you can use his hells, I guess he thinks very highly of you boy haha. <laughs> Issei. I don't really care much, but I guess it's a small gift of good faith. Gasper. T the skeleton is scary hidden behind Issei. Issei. Yes, Gasper is gone stroking his head a little like a child. After that little talk the boys prepared to enter the giant stadium which was full of people, the commentator welcomed them, and the people praised Issei especially, and also welcomed their rivals, but Sereog's team had clearly all the attention and glory. Zenovia. It seems that Sereog's group is the most popular. There he is. Well, he is the strongest of all the young demons after all. Issei. Well we'll see about that he said with a smile. Akeno. Ara, Ara Ice Khan is motivated. After they explained the rules and how many points the chess pieces are worth, the rating game had officially started. Issei. Well who will go first? Kiba. I will do it determined. Rias. Are you sure Kiba? Kiba. Issei is not the only one who wants to see how strong Butchu is, I assure him that I will win. Rias. Well, I trust you. 
Gibba was the first and began to fight against a knight, the fight went in favor of the Gremory group, and due to the knight's carelessness, Kibba gave him a slash that defeated him. Commentator. The winner of the first battle is Yudo Kibba, the people just applauded Kibba, and the blonde just smiled at his victory. They say. Apparently they became really strong, if they continue like this, they will be able to have a fight with me without having to hold me back. Gibba. Well your training helped a lot. Time skip, the fighting progressed and the only pieces left were Yuu, Kiba, Zenobia, Asia, Azara and Issei. Note. In the other fights they lost against Sariog's team, people only applauded young Bale as a hero, and the Gremory entourage was only serious when seeing Sariog's team, although Issei only cared about Sariog, since it could be seen that he was hiding more strength from somewhere. Both leaders threw some dice, which was the way to choose who would be the next to participate, and the most anticipated battle was already decided by those same dice. Commenter. Finally ladies and gentlemen player Sariog is going to participate, people just screamed with euphoria when they saw that the black haired man would finally participate. They say. Well I think he's my turn walking Asia Sariog, Azara. Oni-chan good luck, Rias. Yes, good luck, they say. Ha, thank you, but I don't need it looking with a confident smile at his companions. Issei and Sariog were face to face at that moment, and both just looked at each other with a smile that showed emotion. Commentator. Finally the combat we all waited for, the one respected and feared by even the gods the Shinigami against the great Sariog, open your eyes wide because this battle will be epic, and the VIP room, SW. Jijoho look at him you long he has the same smile as me when I was young Jijoho I'm really proud of him. Ravel. It seems like Issei Kun is excited. Roswis. It seems like I haven't seen that smile before. Azazel. This battle will be interesting he said with a smile. On the battlefield, they were both transported to a fog-covered donut, and the ground seemed to be made of clouds, and was adorned with a beautiful starry sky, Sariog was still in front of him, and a man with antifaz was next to him. Sariog. They say you can defeat even the strongest gods, let's see if it's true. They say. Fine, although I won't hold back with you. They both looked at each other, and neither of them moved, each one waited for the other's movement, and both used their auras to intimidate the other. In the end, a drop of Sariog sweat fell to the cloud floor, and when doing so, as if it were a bell, they both moved and collided. Fists causing a large wave of air to disperse some clouds. Issei landed clean blows on Sariog's face and body, and the muscular man did not want to admit it, but his blows were strong like a wrecking ball, and fast like lightning, Issei easily dodged the bale's blows, and that made him angry. The people who saw in the stands and in the VIP area were surprised by Issei's great skill, and even the mass and his companions had to admit that they did not believe that Issei had become so strong in a week. Issei dodged Bale's blows and kicks with neutrality, apparently the black-haired man increased the intensity of his blows, and at one point, Sariog gave Issei a strong blow in the face, but Issei did not even move due to the blow. Issei. You know he said still having the bale's fist in his face, I have received blows from creatures that could kill the mass with a little effort, and I even had to kill them with my bare hands, while having a smile on my face eh, your simple blow doesn't even tickle me. Issei covered his fist with black fire and hit Sariog hard in the face, sending him flying to the other side of the field. Sariog got up in pain and for the first time in years he saw how his nose and mouth were bleeding, the black-haired man smiled and wiped himself with his hand. Sariog. You're really amazing wiping the blood from his mouth and nose, but I won't lose yet. Sariog's companion transformed into a golden lion, surprising Issei and the spectators. Sariog. I present to you Regulius Nemia, he is an independent Longinus, when his user died, he took the form of a lion and killed everyone present in the place, now he is part of my family, and I make him fight only when I think it is necessary with a smile looks like I won't waste it. Issei. Yui, Lin, can you take care of the cat? Yui. Sure master, Lin. Count on us, master, both took their human forms and began to attack the lion ferociously. Sariog. The weapons curated by the Bible God and the first demon king looking at Yui and Lin, really are magnificent. Issei. If you fell in love, I'm sorry, both of them are already busy Issei's commands were covered with black fire and formed giant claws. Sariog. It seems like you have more tricks hidden. Issei. You too, but it seems that I will have to push you to the limit for you to use them, but for now, let's dance he said with a smile. Issei with his claws began to attack the bale, his claws making light cuts in the demon's skin, only making every cell in his body writhe in pain, as his flame seemed to be more concentrated and powerful than before. In the VIP room, Azazel. Impressive looking at Issei's claws I guess you guys helped him do that looking at the monkey and the dragon that was in a smaller form, while we only helped him increase his powers and control them better, he did the rest. Roswis. Every time Issei seems to have some limit he breaks it and increases his strength looking at Issei with a slight blush he is quite a warrior. Serzichas. 
Well it seems like I train pretty hard, I just hope it doesn't go to his head. Azizel. You're only saying that because you're still upset because he slept with your sister looking at the reteed. Serzichas. Shut up. In the battle, Issei extended his claws to catch the bale, but he had to get serious so that his claws didn't incinerate him or split him in half. Sereog. Ah shit ah you're a good boy I admit it breathing a little tired, Issei. You too, even the mass would have already fled dead or would have writhed in pain when they felt the cuts of my claws. Next to them, the golden lion was already breathing hard from the fight, and both girls' swords seemed like they weren't even sweating while fighting. Sereog. Regulus, it's time to use it looking at the lion. Regulus. Yes, sir. Sereog. Get ready boy because I will go all out. The lion rushed towards Sereog and joined him with a strong flash. Sereog, my Lion King of Nemea, you who carry the name of the Lion King, listen to my call and lend me your being balance breaker Regulus King Leather Rex. Issei was only covered a little by the strong glow that it gave off, and the glow that disappeared could see Sereog with a golden armor in the shape of a lion. Sereog. What do you think boy, this is my definitive form. Issei. Not bad both girls took their sword form again and returned to Issei well, if you don't hold back then neither will I. Issei only took off his trench coat and shirt and showed that she had different weights on her body and little by little he took them off. Sereog. Did you wear that all the time? Issei. Yes, you're not the only one with some hidden things Issei threw those weights away and when they fell to the ground it only raised a large screen of smoke that surprised everyone present and Sereog himself. Issei. Putting on his clothes again those weights in total were about 500 kilograms, surprising the black-haired man, so let's see what I can do without them. Issei in a blink appeared in front of the bale and hit him with his claw, but his hand was stopped by his. Sereog. The armor is not only for protection, it also multiplies my abilities, giving him a blow to the stomach that made him spit out some saliva and blood. Sereog threw Issei to the other side of the arena, but the albino recovered in the air and ended up standing. Issei. Damn, his strength increased a lot, and the shine of that armor weakens my shadow creations, but still. Issei created thousands of swords of light around him, and they all pointed towards the demon. Issei. I'm not going to lose either. The swords went towards the black-haired man, but with a loud clap he made some deviate, and others he only dodged or destroyed with his strength. Issei launched himself with his claws and hit the golden armor several times, but it didn't even crack a bit. After a while Sereog and Issei hit and hit each other without mercy. Issei only separated for a moment to unsheath his swords and begin to cut and attack his rival, Sereog had to recognize that Issei was a tough opponent, since they could not withstand his blows, much less when he had the armor. Of the both of them hit, cut and stabbed the other, Issei covered his swords with his fire and began to cut through the armor, Sereog was surprised to see that his armor had large cuts and scratches on it, since no weapon could penetrate the defense of him. Issei covered his arm with fire and they both got a big blow to the face and they were both thrown to the other side of the battlefield. Issei. Og being the strongest of the young demons was no game Og breathing heavily, Sereog. You too Og you are very strong Og your power easily surpasses the mass, but you better give up or your mistress will be sad. Issei. I am not anyone's servant I only help Riaz because she is my girlfriend and future wife he said with a smile. Riaz, upon hearing those words, could only smile while he blushed and the other girls complained a little about not including them. Sereog. I see, haha you have my respect hi would you say no one has forced me to wear this armor because of that and because you help and protect those you love I respect you. Issei. I also respect you, no one other than Tiamat had made me use all my power. They both just looked at each other and then started laughing in the middle of the fight. Riaz. Are you laughing? Azara. Why? You. It's a man thing, they wouldn't understand it haha looking at her brother. Tiba. Only a man would understand this, then we will explain it to him. Asper. Haha that's fun, it seems like Issei senpai made a new friend. Issei. Damn, no one has ever made me bleed so much while he took off his hood and showed his face full of his and Sereog's blood. Sereog. It's the same looking at his wounds no one has hurt me so much before. Issei. Well I think you're right, it's time to end this. Sereog. Yes, Issei sheathed his swords again and covered his body with black and white flames. Sereog. Aren't you going to use your swords? Issei. No, I want to fight hand to hand like you do. Sereog. Like a man haha, ha, well let's see how hard you hit. Both just threw themselves hard at each other, both men clashed fists and gave tremendous blows that most could not give at the same intensity, each blow they gave broke the sky, the combat field that they had created was broken by the intensity and clash of powers that both launched with each blow. At one point Issei was able to land a blow on Issei's entire face, and Sereog at the same time also landed another blow on Issei's face. Both of them, upon feeling the blow, only separated a little while they staggered and looked at each other again. Sereog. I I I. Issei. 
AI Ig. Both of them were still hitting each other all over their bodies. Hit and hit was the only thing they heard, and again they both got another hit in the face. And music. Issei fell to the ground but got up with some difficulty and could see Sereog with his head down with his hair covering his eyes. Issei. Still dot dot Ig you don't beat me I can do this all day haha. Issei just wiped the blood that was dripping from his nose and mouth and lunged again, but a voice stopped him. Regulus. Stop Hayudu my master can no longer continue. Issei took a good look and could see that Sereog was knocked out on his feet. Issei. His willpower kept him standing haha holding the black haired man so he wouldn't shut up you really have my respects friend haha. Ha. Presenter. The battle is over the winner is Hayudu Issei. They both just fell on the ground tired and Issei also fell unconscious. Time skip. Issei was waking up and when he looked around he was in an infirmary and next to him was Sereog. They both congratulated each other on the battle and laughed a little before his friends arrived with him. There he is. Ice hugging Issei worried Baka you scared us. Issei. Haha <laughs> sorry, but I think I got carried away. Azazel. Yes, you can see they both beat each other in the face, but it was a great fight. Serzichas. In fact we thought we should promote you to high class demon and angel, but. Michael. You're already a god so it was a stupid thing haha. <laughs> Sereog. Haha well I really had fun in our battle, and since in the future we will be a family we can always fight, haha, ha. although I know that you did not use that definitive form of demon and angel, so I will become strong to the point that they will have to use it to be able to win I. Issei. Haha well I wait for that day. Rias. Ice getting the boy's attention and holding his cheeks and kissing him, that's why you worried me, and also because I will definitely be your wife. Issei. Sure. Asia also hugged Issei, but saw him with a cute pout afterwards. Asia. Issei san it's not fair, I also want to be your girlfriend and wife. Arena. Yes, me t too. Issei. But aren't they already? Arena. Huh. Issei. Well after all you and I we've already done that so it's a way of saying that I accept you as wives. The girls blushed a little but smiled and hugged Issei. The cane. It's not fair, we didn't do that, Sarah. Yes, we also want to officially be Oni-chan's wives. The boys just laughed a little more for a while, and Sereog said goodbye to everyone before leaving, but Issei gave him a few last words before leaving. Issei. Sereog stopping the black-haired man it's but the next time we face each other we'll go all out raising his fist. Sereog. Hahaha <laughs> of course yes, and I promise that in the future I will beat you also raising my fist. They both bumped their fists, and everyone could see a light when their fists collided. SW. Jojo, this is how a very good friendship begins. Rias. Where does that light come from in his hands if we don't feel any magic around him? Yu. Things that only men can do. Asper. I want my fist to shine too. After saying goodbye, Issei and the others went home to rest from the hard fight, and Issei had a feeling that he would wake up with a lot of breasts around her face. Part 21 Facing My Demons. The day was a beautiful day and an albino was getting up calmly, and when he opened his eyes he saw nothing. He didn't see any girl around him, not even Yui, and Lin was on his neck or around him hiding under the sheets, that made Issei a little strange. But he took little notice of it and just got up. Issei walked through the long hallways of his now mansion until he reached the kitchen. Issei. Yawning good morning he said boredly. There was no one in the kitchen either, Issei was already getting a little worried, since at least one of his girls was in the kitchen at this time having breakfast or talking to the others. Issei already seemed a little suspicious and went to the main hall. Issei. Hey, where are you looking for his friends? Issei just continued walking, and when he was in the living room and turned the corner, he asked to see all of his classmates talking to Issei's two least favorite people. The H. 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 Hello son greeted Issei. 16. M. H. Good morning H. Son, how are you? Little nervous. Issei only looked with a dead look at his parents, if that's what he could call them, half of us are on them, and every molecule of his body wanted to kill those people in front of him. Issei. What are you doing here? He said with a serious look and a somewhat macabre voice. The H. W. Well, we came to see our children somewhat nervous because of Issei's cold attitude. M. H. Yes, the house feels lonely without you. Issei. Rias. Rias. Yes, they are here to visit us. Looking at Issei with some fear for what he could do. Issei. Well, you, Azara, Akane and Sarah are fine, you can go he said simply and coldly. M.H. Yes, but we also came to see C. How are you? Issei. Since when do you care? Weren't you the ones who walked away from me? Looking at both. They both lowered their heads a little, but asked to see Issei's eyes, which reflected an immense emptiness in front of them. Azara. Oni-chan looking at Issei they are coming to visit, they will stay here for a week. Issei just looked at both of them, and they gave him a slightly nervous smile, but he knew that Issei wasn't happy about that. Issei. 
It doesn't matter, do whatever you want, just stay away from me going to the kitchen to have breakfast. The couple was only a little depressed by Issei's coldness, but they understood the reason for his attitude. On the other hand, their companions only calmed down a little, since they only imagined Issei torturing both of them or making his wolves devour the couple. Hi Udu. Their companions gave a sigh, but certain girl swords looked at both elders with hatred, but both just got up and went with Issei to have breakfast. Time skip, Issei had already eaten breakfast while Yu and Azara guided their parents to one of the guest rooms so they could stay. Through Issei's head there were only thousands of ways to kill his parents, obviously in an extremely painful way, so that both of them would suffer, but he knew that if he did, his brothers would be angry with him, and he didn't want that, so he just put up with his desire to kill his parents. The couple and just continued their day normally. Time skip, now we can see Issei meditating in the courtyard of his mansion, since Yu Long taught him to better concentrate his energy through meditation and use it as if it were an extension of his body, from there he got those claws made of shades. Issei let the world around him pass normally, while well he used the morning light to make swords of light, several swords of light were created, but bodies like knights also appeared around Issei. Issei stood up and created a sword of light, and the knights around took the swords that were floating and got into a combat position to appear to attack Issei. The knights only prepared to attack as Issei took the sword he had created and waited for the knights to attack. The knights made of light rushed towards Issei, and he only countered the attacks of the knights, Issei cut the knights down, and at the end all the knights had fallen defeated by Issei, it was easy for him to create and defeat his creations, so they barely made him break a sweat, but he only did it so he wouldn't stay inside and talk to his parents. Issei just finished and he could hear someone applauding, and he could see his ex-mother applauding for Issei's demonstration of skill. M.H. It's very surprising, your skilled son looking at Issei with a smile, Issei. Thank you, I guess he said looking at his ex-mother what are you doing here, I know you're both not just visiting. The smile that the brunette had only faded and she looked at his son. M.H. We just want to spend a good time together, as a family like. Issei. Like before, when they didn't abandon me and they cared, is that what you meant? M.H. No, no, we just want to make up for the time we lost. Issei. The time you wasted being idiots. The brunette just nodded her head. Issei. And tell me, you would still want to make up for lost time, if I were the normal Issei the woman only lowered her head when she heard that you would still come to see me or spend time with me, if you hadn't seen me in combat with Razor, and would they have known that I am a god, using his angel powers to see if what he said was true. The brunette only let out a few tears while her head was safely lowered. M.H. Sorry Sniff forgive us for Sniff being stupid. Issei. I really had already forgiven them a long time ago surprising the chestnut when I met Yui and Lin for the first time I remembered what love was, I could remember what it was to feel affection towards someone else, and for the first time I cared for another person looking at chestnut, I don't have a grudge against them, because thanks to how they treated me, I was able to meet Yui and Lin. Also the other girls and I love them all with all my heart, although not so much Yuri, but I see her as a friend, so thank you looking at her ex-mother with a small smile. Seeing that small smile, the brunette just smiled with some guilt and hugged her ex-son. M.H. So we are people. Issei. Not entirely, I'm just saying that I don't resent them for ignoring me all my childhood, but you still have to make up for 9 years of my life. M.H. Then I will try hard with a determined look so that you can call me mother again. Issei. I'm sorry but that position is already occupied by my mother Venelana Gremory, but it doesn't mean you can't share the position with her. The woman just smiled a little and hugged Issei, and he just hugged back just a little. After that little talk they both just returned to the Issei house with her typical cold and bored face and the brunette with a small smile. After a few hours where Issei's brothers and girls spent time with Issei's parents, everyone was somewhat happy that Issei didn't even have a grudge against both of them, but certain girl swords had a bad feeling. Time skip night, everyone in the house was having dinner since Mrs. Hayuudu had made a super special dinner for everyone. Issei's classmates only talked to each other or they talked and complimented the lady on how delicious the food tasted. Azara. It's delicious. Okasan with a smile when tasting her mother's food tastes like Oni Chan's food. M.H. Do you know how to cook Issei? Issei. Yes, it's nothing. P.H. And tell us, son, have you done it with some of the girls? With a mocking tone, some of the girls at the table blushed at what the brunette said, and the couple understood instantly. M.H. Ara, well, I think that in the future we will have many grandchildren, Fufufu, but will you too? Azara. W well yes, but I'm a demon and a dragon, so incest is allowed she said, so that her mother wouldn't give her away for being depraved. Th. Well, how about we have a party to celebrate that my son will be a father in the future she said with a smile. Issei. I don't think it's a good idea, besides I don't like parties. Th. Nonsense, surely everyone wants to have fun, right, plus it will be something intimate, it won't be anything big, what do you think? Rias. 
A party well I think I would like to dance with ice looking at Issei with a flirtatious smile. Akeno. Ara, let's have a party where we will get ice cun drunk and we can play with him, she said with a blush and a somewhat perverted smile, I think I like the idea. Mh. Honey, it's Issei's house, he has to decide looking at Issei what do you say, son. The girls just looked at Issei with a tender look and another excited for the party. Issei. Sigh as long as there are few people and they don't make a mess, I guess it's fine. Ph. It's decided haha, don't worry, only people close to you will be there. Issei. Sigh yes, yes, well I'm going to sleep, are you girls coming? All. Hi. The girls only went with Issei, but the albino had a bad feeling about the party they were going to give. Now we can see Issei lying next to his girls, they were all asleep hugging Issei, but the albino couldn't sleep. Yui. Are you awake master? Lin. Master. Issei. Yes, yes I am Sai I just don't like the party, I have a bad feeling. Yui. Us two and Lin saw in your father's soul that he had something hidden. Issei. Something hidden. Like what? Lin. I don't know, we angels can only see their feelings and whether they are telling the truth or not, but I could see that they are hiding something. Issei. My mom apparently wants to redeem herself from what I saw, but that idiot hasn't even apologized, if he has bad feelings towards the girls or towards me I will kill him serious. Yui. Good choice master, but for now let's go to sleep, okay. Issei. Yes, tomorrow there is that ridiculous party, let's see what will happen, well, good night girls. Both. Good night master. In the Hayudu couple's room, mh. I don't know Goru, Issei seems to give us a second chance, maybe we shouldn't have this party. Goru. Come on Kasara, it will only be a harmless party, only some ministers and some high class demons will come, when they are impressed that one of our children is a god, and the other is the bearer of the red emperor, they will give me the position of boss, and then we can spend the rest of the week with our children. Kasara. Yes, but those people are disgusting, don't you think that with how pretty Issei's girls are, I could see a problem. Goru. Me and Issei will take care of them, and there is also you, and that boy Kiba, we will have everything under control. Kasara. Well, I hope we don't ruin this, I do want to be Issei's mother again. Boru. Don't worry, you'll see that everything will be fine giving him a kiss on the forehead let's go to sleep, okay. Kasara. Well okay. They both just laid down and fell into their dreams, but a certain older brunette had a crooked smile. Time skip next day. Issei only got up a little annoyed since it was making a lot of noise below her, and when she went down to the living room, she could still see several butlers preparing the house for the party. Rias. Hello Ice, we are preparing for the party with your parents, what do you think? Diamat. Issei Sama, can you help me choose a dress? With a tender look and a flirtatious smile. Asia. Issei San, me too with a small blush. All the girls just asked Issei if he would help them choose a dress, and he just agreed with a sigh, but one brown had a somewhat evil smile as he looked at Issei's girls. Time skip night. The night had arrived with the guests of the party, the guests were some high class demons, others were important people, but the ones who stood out the most were the supposed bosses of his father's work, who were old people, they were good people, they liked them. Good to say, and they also thanked them for inviting them to the party. The funny thing is that all the people present knew about the supernatural world, and Issei found that strange, but Riaz told him that most of them made packs with demons to get what they wanted. Issei was somewhat out of place at that party, since he did not like very refined things, and much less the bourgeois laughter of the rich women and men who were around him, but Issei just put up with it and went out to the patio for a moment to have a drink. Little air. Issei. Sigh I hate parties and more like this looking at the beautiful night full of stars, Diamat. No way appearing and standing next to Issei you know that maybe your stupid father did this because he has something that he hides, right? Issei. Yes I know, but I hope the feeling I have is not true Sigh, Diamat. It's a beautiful night, don't you think? Looking to the sky, Issei. Yes looking at the sky next to her I promise you looking at Tiamat, Tiamat. The what? Issei. I will fulfill your wish, I promise you that that wish that you still have in your heart will be fulfilled looking at Tiamat with a smile, Tiamat. I don't doubt it, because if you break that promise turning to Issei's people, I will kill you along with all the others kissing Issei. They both just kissed and little by little Issei's hands ran over Tiamat's body. The dragon was only touching Issei's chest, and they both wanted to go further, but stopped when they heard something break. Crass. Inside the house a glass could be heard falling along with a small scream. Issei just ran inside and could see the fat blonde still trying to corner Asia. Extra. Come on girl, I just want to have some fun, you know what I mean well I had Haja cornered against the wall. Asia. Sir, please move away somewhat scared. The fat attempt touched Asia, but Issei took her hand and bent it with a pull. The XTRA1. I ah uh, you looking angrily at Issei who do you think you are an idiot? Issei just hugged Asia protectively and left her next to Tiamat. Issei. 
The owner of this house and the host of the idiotic party, so long before I break any more of your body parts he said angrily. Elsewhere, Riaz could be heard hitting a man for knowing that he had touched one of his breasts. Riaz. Idiot slapping him what do you think you're doing? When the man received the blow, he only got angry and tried to hit Riaz. The XTRA2. Bitch you don't even know who I am, now I'm going to enjoy touching your whole body mar bitch. The man only received a strong blow from Issei who moved in the blink of an eye knocking out the idiot. Issei. Are you okay Riaz? Riaz. Yeah, he was just an idiot looking at the knocked out man on the ground. Issei's girls all stood behind him while several men wanted to touch them. The XTRA3. Come on beautiful, we just want to have fun. The XTRA4. We just want to be with you that's all, come on, we won't hurt you. Issei just got annoyed and snapped his fingers making wolves appear to scare everyone. Issei. Alright idiots looking at everyone if you don't leave now the wolves got bigger, they will reach about 5 meters tall, you will be eating my shadows. The wolves scared everyone, and several fled in terror and the demons, upon recognizing Issei, only escaped in a magical circle. The only ones left were the bosses from Goru's work, and they were talking to their wives. The OSS 1. Damn boy, sorry, some of them were our workers apologizing. The OSS 2. If we fire them later, behavior like that cannot be accepted, and sorry for what they did. They say. It's okay, they were just idiots, plus you guys didn't do anything so you can rest assured. The OSS 3. Well, we better leave taking his wife even though we finished the party there, the night is young, right, honey? Looking at his wife. Wife. Of course love. The elders left with a smile, and only Issei's companions and his family remained. Isara. Sorry son, I didn't want this to happen looking at Issei with shame. Issei. Sigh it's okay. You. Where is dad? The boys just looked for the man but didn't find him, but then they heard something break and saw Goru drunk and looking angry. Goru. You hiccup what the hell do you think you're doing hiccup the guy you hit was a minister hip now, he won't give me a best job hip thanks to you. Issei. That was what you were hiding, then. Did you just want to make more money by using us as trophies or items that you can show off to others? Bissara. Honey, now she didn't finish because the older brunette hit her, knocking her to the ground. Boru. Shut up bitch hip you know how many bitches and employees I have slept with, just to forget you hip you were never my wife hip you never were, since you started missing that trash pointing at Issei. Issei was just filled with rage and hit his ex-father making him fall. Issei just hit the drunken idiot again and again, and again, and again, and again, and again, and again, until he disfigured his face and made his entire face. Face was covered in his own blood. Issei. Damn, you have never changed, you are still the same simple idiot, and you will never stop being lifting the brunette by his shirt. Oru. Shut up, damn mistake you just had to let one of those bitches sleep with those rich people, so they could earn more money haha, maybe because you were trash, your parents abandoned you. Isara. Goru stop. Issei. What? But if you are. Oru. What? You did not know. Hahaha, <laughs> you were never our son hahaha, <laughs> they left you at the door of our house, and out of pity we adopted you because you believed that you didn't have any power like your brothers, or because we always ignored you, you were just a mistake that another family did not want to face hahaha <laughs> you are still a mistake hahaha. <laughs> Those words only filled Issei's heart with anger and hatred, and she just continued and continued and continued and continued hitting the brunette until she nearly killed him. Issei finally got tired of hitting the brunette, and the older man was barely breathing from so many blows he received. Issei. Listen to me, you bastard looking at the half-dead brunette, I don't want to see you near any of us again, because if you do I'm going to torture you in the worst way possible throwing the brunette out the door, making him fall face first onto the concrete of the cold street. Issei only closed the door of his house and put his back against the door, hearing the truth, the truth that he was adopted hurt his whole soul, and Issei just fell to the ground, releasing some tears. Issei. Sniff sniff you knew that right. Looking at his mother you always knew that. Isara. I don't. Issei. Don't lie to me, you knew that looking at his mother angrily. The older brunette was only a sincho, and that made Issei shed more tears, and the albino just ran to his room. Rias. Damn I just want to kill that bastard angry at the thought of the older Hayuadu. Diamat. That damned one made Issei Sama cry, I will burn him with my fire. Asia. I think we have to see if Issei Sab is okay worried about the albino. You. Yes, but maybe he doesn't want to talk to anyone. Azara. It doesn't matter, he has always helped us even though he knew he would get hurt, and now it's our turn to help him going to his brother's room. In Issei's room you could only see Issei crying in his bed, knowing that he was adopted, made his heart hurt a lot and more when he was buried that way. Yui. Master, is it okay? Entering the door of the room next to Lin. Azara. Oni-chan. All Issei's classmates were at his door now looking at Issei. Issei. Please leave sniff I don't want to talk now. Yui. Brother, I know it's hard, but, Sarah. Oni-chan, you are still our little brother. The Kane. Yes, whether you are adopted or not, we all still love you, and you are our family. 
Yui. Master, I know it's hard, but I don't know how you can let yourself be carried away by that idiot's words, whether you are adopted or not, you will always be our master hugging a say, Lin. I always love, always hugging a say, Rias. And you will always be my cute ice, the Issei I fell in love with hugging him, Ravel. You helped me and you helped my brother even when he behaved like a greedy idiot, you told him a second chance, and that part of you made me fall in love with that kind part, Yuri. And you also give me a second chance too, not as a girlfriend but as a friend, and I am grateful to you for not hating me or having any kind of resentment towards me, Azara. And you will always be our brother even if you are adopted Oni-chan, because we love you hugging Issei with his brothers, Asia. Issei-san, I never knew my parents, but still here you have someone who wants to make things happen showing Kasara, and she loves you if you are not her son also hugging Issei, Issei. Sniff even though we don't have the same blood looking at his mother and friends, Kasara. Although you are not really my son, I do see you as one, and I love you Issei hugging Issei. The albino only cried a little more when he felt the hug and heard the beautiful words of his classmates and mother until he fell asleep. Rias. I think he fell asleep looking at Issei asleep between his breasts, Yui. Well I think master needs more love and affection now stroking his head, Diamat. Yes, we will give it to you, Ravel. Because all of us. All. We love you Issei kissing the sleeping albino. At the end of the night the girl slept next to Issei giving him all the love and affection, Issei's mother also slept next to him, and the boys went to their rooms to sleep and hopes that tomorrow Issei would be better. And another side, a certain crow was bored doing paperwork that his terrible suffering will end. I see that you are having fun as always Azazel said a hooded person coming out of a dark corner in his room, Azazel. Who are you and how could I not feel you somewhat altered? Calm down, Crow, I'm just coming to ask you a favor said the hooded man, but you could tell that by his height and voice, he was a child, Azazel. You're just a brat, what do you want? I need you to call Issei Hayuadu and his entire group along with the student council he said seriously, Azazel. And why should I? When the boy heard that question he just smiled and took out his wings, and that is what shocked the crow, the right wing was black, and the left was white, and gave off the same aura and power as Issei. This is enough, when those there call I will be here disappearing being swallowed by his shadow, Azazel. What the hell still in shock this is bad, I have to call the boy and the others serious, but still thinking what just happened, Part 22 A Complicated Day. Issei's days were now a little bit weirder than normal, his mother now lives in her big mansion, since she didn't want to return home with the idiot Goru, and now she took care of the house like any other mother, Issei too. He feels better when talking to her, and with the nice words of the girls and friends yesterday, he made Issei a little more affectionate with the girls. Now we can see Issei with his classmates and the student council in Azazel's office, well he looked seriously at Issei without him noticing. Issei. Well, Azazel, what you had to tell us so much yawning was sleeping. Azazel. It's 3 in the afternoon you know. Issei. I had a rough night yesterday please just tell us what's wrong. Azazel. Well first of all, I need you to answer some questions for me looking seriously at Issei tell me Issei, none of your girls are pregnant or gave birth to a baby, right? Issei and the girls just shook their heads but were a little disappointed as they shook their heads. Azazel. Well we have a problem, Issei. And that's it. I can answer it for you. On the roof of the office there was apparently a hooded child looking at everyone. The boy alone came down from the ceiling, and when he fell he threw himself at Issei. Issei's reflexes were not activated, nor any other instinct that he had harvested with his training, and in the end the little hooded man just hugged Issei, surprising everyone. Issei didn't know why he also wanted to hug him back, he even felt like he already knew the boy who hugged him, but he didn't know why. Issei. Dot dot edo who are you kid and why are you hugging me? Looking at the boy who still hugs him. Ooh he, sorry, it must be something strange from your point of view separating well, let me introduce myself, my name is Ethan Hayuadu, nice to meet you removing the hood, showing a white haired boy with red eyes very similar to Issei. Everyone was in shock, especially Issei's girls, and they looked at the child, very similar to Issei, with a motherly look, but with a look of death at Issei. Rias. Ice you better explain this with a nice smile, but with an aura of death, Issei. I don't know what's going on Ria's sigh. Issei just looked at his son and he was right, his aura was very similar, but it had a certain crimson color similar to Ria's. Issei. Wait, you're really my son looking at the boy, Ethan? Yes Odo-san, it's nice to meet your young version of the past with a tender smile, Ria's. From the past, Ethan. Yes, well I will explain a little better, I am the son of Issei Hayuadu and Ria's Gremory, my name is Ethan and I come from the future. Everyone's jaws fell to the ground, and Riaz only approached the albino child and stood at his height. Riaz. Why you are my son? Still in shock, Ethan. Of course I am Okasan, and let me say that you are just like your future version, it seems that you don't age with a tender childish smile. Riaz just let out a few tears and hugged his son from the future tightly, while Issei also hugged them both. 
When they separated everyone had thousands of questions in their heads to ask the boy. I say. Wait then if you are my son, you taking out his wings. The Ethan also took out his wings, and when he saw them closely they were the same, they had the same color, although the little ones were a little smaller than his father's. All those present only saw father and son mantras, his wings releasing small black and white flames that joined together as if their powers were compatible with the other. Azazel. Okay, sorry for interrupting, but what the hell is going on here? Ethan. Calm down crow, I'll explain it to them he laughing a little. Azazel. Don't call me that brat. Ethan. But I always call you that Uncle Raven haha <laughs> looking at Azazel. Azazel. Okay, he's definitely your son, he's just as annoying as you, Issei looking somewhat irritated at the boy, but did you call me uncle? Ethan. Sure, you're one of my uncles, there's also Uncle Yu and Uncle Kibba looking at both of them. Yu. We are uncles looking happily at the child. Kibba. Damn you're right we are guys comically hugging you. Sona. Okay, now could you explain to us what's happening? That's what we were going for Sona Akasan. You are also the same as our mothers in the future, it seems that none of them age. Two two voices sounded from the boy's back, and that apparently came from his two swords. Both swords shone a little, and when the glow disappeared there were two girls, one Albion and one black-haired, very similar to girls' swords. Nice to meet you, father, mothers, I am Yuna, the sword of the night sky the black-haired girl introduced herself, and I am Lily the sword of the blue rose. Both girls introduced themselves with a smile and hugged Issei tenderly. The albino was already nervous, but Yui and Lin just took their human forms and hugged them both. Yui. Kawaii Hujing Yuna. Lin. You are our daughter's right. Lily. Yes we are Okus and hugging her mother. Yui. They are even swords like us, and they are just as pretty as us hugging her daughters. Issei. Well this doesn't surprise me looking at both of them well it's better that they explain before we get a bucking surprise. Ethan. Hey well, as I already told you, we are from the future, and we come here to prevent the world from perishing he said, well Rias hugged him like he was a little cat, Sona. That the world will be destroyed. Lily. Not entirely, just open a big war where many will die. Yuna. And the person responsible for that is Loki. Everyone was serious when they heard that, but Issei only had a bored face. Issei. Well I'll just have to take him out of the seal and kill him that's all looking at the three little ones. Ethan. It's not that simple Odo-san if you do that you will create a time paradox where there is no way back. Rias. Paradox. Ethan. Well, an example is that let's say that if we go to the past and kill Uncle Razor, a paradox would be created where the rating game where Odo-san fraud against him for Oka-san's hand would never be created. Mother would never have fallen in love with you, or at least not in the way she should have been. Yuna. Even some of our sisters may never exist. Azara. Wait, sisters, there is more. Ethan. Yes, dad has many children, although they are all women, and I am the only boy in the family he said innocently. Zenovia. And how many girls was Issei with? Ethan. Well everyone in this room and there are also more that apparently you haven't met yet or aren't here. Issei just paled, and the girls in Sona's entourage blushed like a tomato. Issei. T everyone nervous. Arena. And there's still more to go. Akeno. Ara, Ara Ice Kun is quite the womanizer fufufu. Yuna. Yes well, Odo-san was named the harem king for that very reason. Lily. And he also has new daughters every year. Azazel. Ha 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 damn boy, the rumor that the other boys and I spread was not in vain ha 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 ha. Issei. Shut up, you're not helping looking at the crow. Ethan. Don't feel sad Odo-san after all you are someone very powerful in the future, you even surpassed the old god of the bible and the first demon king consoling his father. Issei. Really? Yuna. If you even always train Ethan so that he will be your successor since he inherited all your powers. Lily. And since we were also partly swords on our mother's side, we are now his weapons. Irina I have a question. Ethan. Yes Irina Akasan with a smile. Irina couldn't stand it and hugged Ethan like he was a cat. Irina. You are so kawaii you even took out your father's appearance looking at the little boy. Rias. Hey he is my son taking Ethan out of Irina's arms when you see your children you can hug them, but he is mine, that's right Ethan Chan maternally hugging little albino. Ethan. He well, but what did you want to ask Irina Akasan? Irene. How did you get here? Ethan. In the time machine that Uncle Raven built pointing to Azazel. Azazel. I told you to stop calling me that brat looking at the albino. Issei. Azazel created a time machine. Yuna. If one goes for a round trip, unfortunately he didn't do it for long trips. Issei. And how did Loki return if he didn't go by the same method as yours? Ethan. Well I can't give you all the details, but Loki escapes from his seal in the future because of a battle that will soon take place, although it didn't destroy the seal it only weakened it, and after another fight he was able to escape. Azazel. And what else happened? Yuna. He also travels to the past, not by the same means as us, he returns by a slightly more special method in his case. Zenovia. Special. Ethan. 
He made pacts with ancient demons, dark demons with great dark magic. They say. How much? Ethan. So much so that even God tried to destroy them and take away that magic and then destroy it. Yuna. Loki followed some small crumbs, crumbs that he could follow until he reached what he wanted. Lily. Apparently it was forbidden magic, the magic of the first demons. Azazel. Impossible, even the factions work together to destroy them don't tell me that idiot. Ethan. Yes, he made deals with ancient time deities, that's how he managed to obtain the magic. Yuna. The gods granted them a couple of trips in time, one going and one returning but you still have to be careful, there is still the return trip and you can go back further. They say. How much? Ethan. He can go back to when you were a child and kill you, but that would cause a paradox where none of us were here. They say. And why haven't you done it? Yuna. All gods are arrogant and when someone beats them they seek to shame and humiliate the person who did it. They say. So that idiot just wants me to kneel before him and admit my defeat. Lily. Basically. Rias. And why doesn't he just free himself? Yuna. If he sees himself maybe he will cause another paradox or a temporal rupture where time and space would explode by breaking his laws. Ethan. Yes, he will just put some things in his favor for when he is freed, like getting an army or helping to get him freed early. They say. Then we have to stop it before that happens, tell me what is that battle that's coming. Ethan. You fight against Trahiksa he said seriously when he said that everyone's blood ran cold but Issei didn't know who he was. Issei. Try what? Yui. I love Trahiksa, she is a giant who even God was afraid of. Lin. He, along with the factions and thousands of demons and angels, had to fight to be able to fight him and seal him. Issei. And it's nothing I can't handle with a smile, plus I also get stronger every day. Ethan. Haha <laughs> that's the father I know hugging his father and I'm also very strong. Issei. So, how much? Ethan. In the future I will surpass you, and I also have my own transformations <laughs> with a smile. Both albinos only talked to each other, while the others only saw them with a small blush, since they were a father and son. Yui. They are always like that Yuna-chan looking at his daughter. Yuna. Always and they always spend their time training together. Rias. Well, he's your only son, right? Lily. Yes we have many sisters, but only Ethan is a boy. Akeno. Ara, how lucky you are to be surrounded by your one Samas and be able to play with them fufufu. Rias. Akeno you are not going to turn my son into a pervert, Yuna. Well Akeno Akasin is not entirely wrong a little nervous, Lily. Ethan, being the only male in the family, has had to go through different things. Asia. Different things. Lily. How to help my sister Titania, the daughter of Tiamat Akasin, with her jealousy, and also Kira Onichin, the eldest daughter of Kaneko Akasin, with the same. Yuna. And also to Izara Akasin several daughters and many more. Yu. Damn so young and he already has a harem, Giba. Well, he's the heir of the harem king, I guess, like, 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 Asper. And have you done it with him too? They both just blushed and lowered their heads so they wouldn't be seen, but that was enough for the others. Tsubaki. Hey calling Yuna us too blushing and pointing to her other friends, Lily. Yes, you all had children with Odo-san. The girls in Sona's entourage blushed a lot, but they weren't bothered by the idea of actually having a child with Issei. On another side, we can see a dark and frozen place where the sky is green and there were living dead everywhere, trying to enter a giant castle of ice and rich black as coal, the only thing that could be known is what it was, is the snow that fell from the green skies full of grey clouds. The doors of the castle opened and the dead entered the interior of the castle, where a female figure could be seen surrounded by already dead monsters on the ground, only leaving the bones as decorations. The dead dispersed, revealing that they had a prisoner with them, a hooded man in a black trench coat. The dead lowered the man's hood and Loki could be seen in front of the dark figure. Loki. You know, it would take me a few days to get here the dead seemed to have it easier with a smile, looking at the dark figure in front of him. Why have you come, god of deception? Loki. I can't visit my pretty little sister with an arrogant smile. The woman just stomped her foot hard and the could cracked along with a very strong wind from the stomp. I'll ask you again, what are you doing here? Loki. Well, well, I'll tell you Hela. A few pink rays only came out of the woman's body showing a very beautiful green-haired woman. On another side, you can see all of Issei's factions and friends at a very long table where everyone was sitting, but the most notable thing is that Issei had the little white-haired boy from the future on his legs moving his legs happily and Yuna and Lily with their mothers. Serzichas. Did I understand rubbing his hand with his fingers these three are from the future and are they coming to stop the world from going to shit? Issei. Basically. Ethan. Hello Serzichas guys having a happy greeting to his uncle grandpa didn't come with you. Serzichas. No, why? Ethan. Well, he always carries candy with him and his jokes are very funny he said happily. Azazel. Ha 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 we better not tell this to him, he will surely go crazy ha 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 ha. Michael. 
and tell us how many more of you are there, Ethan. Well, as I already said, we have new sisters every year, but the most notable are those from Azara Akasan and others. The little boy only took some small photos of his sisters. Ethan. Here is Riko Ni, the eldest of Azara Akasan. Azara. Wow he inherited my traits and also Oni Chan's, Yuna. Yes, but she's crazy possessive. Lily. More than once he almost attacked one of our sisters just to stay with Ethan. Ethan. Reina Anasama, Sona Akasan's daughter, is also here. Sona. She is very pretty and she looks like me seeing the photo, Yuna. She's very bossy, but she's really sick when it comes to Ethan. Lily. Perverted. Ethan. There is also Rivera Ni, Ravel Akasan's daughter, Yuna. An exhibitionist when she is at home, Lily. She always tries to seduce Ethan with her body, Ethan. There is also Kaori Ni, Sarah Akasan's daughter, Yuna. She is always a girl and she is lazy, Lily. She's also a pervert, Serafal. W wait me too blushing, Ethan. Yeah, what's wrong haven't they done it yet? Said innocently, Issei. No son, I don't think you should have said that, Ethan. Well, but you have to do it now because if you don't my sister will disappear so you'll have to do it, Issei. Yes, I know, I already watched the Back to the Future trilogy, well who else? Ethan. Also Ross Akasan's daughter, Lilith, Yuna. She acts shy but in reality she is abusive, Lily. She's also a pervert, Ethan. Well I think there is also Kaneko Akasan's daughter, Kirani, Yuna. When she's in heat she's horrendous. Lily. She always scratches the furniture and Ethan always has to calm her down. They say. Well I think that's enough sigh and now what's son looking at the little albino, Ethan. Well for now we just have to wait until Loki makes his move so we can stop him and prevent him from destroying the world. They say. Well for now let's go home looking at the girls looking at the photos of their daughters and comparing them today was a long day. Rias. Ice we have to conceive our children, Hineko. Yes, Ice Kun has to give me kittens so that Kira Chan can be born. Yui. Me too, Master. Lin. Yes, Master, we have to create Lily and Yuna. Issei just covered Ethan's ears so he wouldn't hear and ignored the girl's words about him. Issei. Girls, we have to take this calmly, okay? Little by little and let things flow. Sona. Ice Kun, I can't. Look, showing the photo of her daughter, she has to be created no matter what, looking with a slight blush at Issei, but determined in her words. Serafal. WW well I can't let my own daughter disappear, so all red we have a child B, but don't get any weird ideas, it's just because I don't want my daughter to disappear, Ravel. Me too, Issei Kun, we have to create my daughter. Azazel. Good to know how you manage ha 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 ha. Yuu. Although if you think about it, Ethan said that all of Issei's wives weren't there yet. Hiba. I wonder who the others are. Issei. You guys don't help Sai well son, let's go. Ethan. Hey, Issei and her son went home with her girls, although she only saw the photos of her future daughters, and then looked at Issei with a blush. Part 23 Goddess of Death The day we can see Issei walking with his son through the streets of Kuo, Issei really needed to leave his house, since each and every one of his girls just wanted to have hex with him, regardless of whether his children from the future were listening or were in the house. Issei was uncomfortable with that thought, but he put it aside, since he would not have any type of relationship with any of them, as long as his children were with them. When the girls knew that they would have many daughters in the future, they only filled up. But the feeling and that was being a mother, they with all their might wanted to see those pretty faces with all their being, and more than once the girls tried to seduce Issei, but he was not a pervert, and he only took Ethan with the excuse of wanting to spend some father-son time, and they both left, leaving the girls and their other two daughters with them. Issei, after walking and buying some ice cream for both of them, stopped at a circa bridge at the academy where Issei visited before he was a god. Issei. Sighing what complicated days eating her ice cream, Ethan. Are you okay Odo-san? You look a little nostalgic. Issei. He, if I visited this bridge when well I don't know if I ever told you about it looking at her son, Ethan. When you didn't have your powers yet and you were bullied by the idiots at the academy, right? Issei. Yes, well I came here to reflect and think about my life sigh, I never thought it would change so much since the last time I came. Ethan. You know Odo-san calling Ando father I come here too, of course in the future, you always took me here, and we ate ice cream together, it was very fun, and we also talked about trivial things in life. They say. Well, I think I'll do it from now on, what do you think? Ethan. Haha I would really like Odo-san said happily. They say. Haha although every time I came here I felt watched, but now I don't feel anything, well I think it was just my imagination. Ethan. Odo-san, can I ask you for advice about women? Issei just looked at his son and laughed a little. Issei. Of course that's what you want to ask. Ethan. Well, as you know, I have many sisters and well, they and I we have already had some friction. Issei. What kind of friction exactly? Ethan. 
well when sometimes I go into the shower without seeing if there is anyone in there and when Akeno Akasan's eldest daughter is there she drags me and punishes me, and well, I don't know what to think, sometimes I think that they just play with me, and that bothers me a little. Issei only looked at himself in that child, a version of him who had many incestuous sisters, but who was still too young to know if what his brothers did with him was love or just a game they played to be the only man. In the family. Ethan. Titania Onisama also says that she wants to have strong children and that I am the best option, maybe they only love me because I am strong and they don't really love me, she said something sad and with small tears, threatening to come out. Issei definitely saw himself in that child, he even had his same fears with girls, that made him smile a little and hug his son. Issei. Well son, I think you just have to have faith in them and hope for the best. Ethan. But what happens if they betray me? If in reality you only love me because of my genes, even if we have the same blood and they also have some of your powers, they don't have it at all. I was the only one who inherited your powers in their entirety, and that scares me, I feel like sometimes I can't trust them, because I think they only want to squeeze me to have a child. I say. Ethan looking into his son's eyes you know if what you say is true, well I don't know how to really answer you, but if that happens they don't deserve the last name that we have, and they don't deserve a good boy like you either stroking his son's head I know that sometimes things are complicated, but like I said before I guess you just have to have faith and hope for the best smiling maybe, when you're older you'll find the answer, but for now just enjoy your life and don't don't worry about those things stroking your son's head while smiling, Ethan just smiled with his father, and they both gave each other a big hug. Issei really liked being with his son Ethan. It was a strange feeling that he didn't fully understand, but when talking to him it was like having a little brother who passed by. Your same problems. In the end Issei only returned home with Ethan after walking for a while longer, and although the little albino was not entirely happy with his father's response, he was willing to have faith as he said, and hope for the best, and also try to enjoy his life. Before worrying about that kind of thing. In another side, elsewhere you can see an old pervert with one eye thoughtful as he looked at mortals. Aden has been very thoughtful for various reasons, and specifically he was thinking about an old memory from a long time ago. Maid. Aden Sama spying on mortals again. Entering with a tray full of food. Hate did not react, he was just immersed in his thoughts, looking at nothing. Maid. Aden Sama is okay. Aden. E dot 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 yes, I'm fine, I was just thinking about one very nice thing seeing the food, and thank you very much for the food. The maid only left the tray of food for the one-eyed old man, it was strange to see him like that, whenever she left him food the old man would lift her skirt to see his panties, or try to touch his butt. Hi do house mansion. Ethan and Issei barely opened the door when a loud explosion could be heard, apparently it was made by Tiamat and Rias who were fighting. Tiamat. Come on, Gremory girl, give up, Issei has worked a lot and more when fighting in that raiding game, like every warrior he has to earn a reward in return, and my reward will be very juicy raising her breasts with her arms. Rias. Of course I won't reward him and in this way we will ensure that our daughter Rika can be born showing a photo of a redeed very similar to Rhea's. Issei. Another of your sisters. Looking at her son. Ethan. Yes, the oldest of all Rick and E, she is one of the best fighters in the entire underworld in heaven, of course under me, but apparently because she was with Akeno Akasan's daughter, she became a sadist. Diamat. Of course not I will reward Issei Sama for her efforts, and my daughter Titania will be born showing the photo of a blue-haired girl similar to Tiamat. Issei and her. Ethan. She is also my sister, she was crowned one of the dragon queens by defeating my mother and others, although she is also below me. Issei. And where did they get those photos from? The girls only pointed at Yuna and Lily who were eating sweets with their grandmother. Issei. Psy daughters might not give their mothers more information about the future, I don't know, maybe I can change something about the future. Yuna. I don't believe that Odo san since they are already predestined to be born. Lily. And also look over there. Issei could only see the other girls making a plan to gape Issei and get pregnant so they could have their children, but they quickly hid the plan when Issei saw what they were doing. Issei. Well son, I guess if your sisters really do this they are in love with you. Ethan. I understand looking at her mother and father. While the boys were relaxing and Kiba and Yu interrogated Ethan about his future, a magic circle appeared and showed Roswas next to Aden. Issei. Aden. All. Aden-sama. Issei. What's up now, Aden? Aden. I need you to come to Asgard serious, Issei. Sorry, I'm having a nice father-son moment here showing Ethan, Aden. Calm, it will be quick, Issei. But I looking at her girls and children, Rias. Don't worry, ice must be something important so you can go with a smile, Diamat. Yes, then you don't make up for it in bed he said with a blush and a perverted smile, Issei's girls just blushed and continued with their plan to have Issei's children, Ethan. 
We are waiting for you Odo-san, and when you come back we are going to play video games together, he said with an innocent smile. Issei just smiled and said goodbye to her girls and children, and then left with Odin and Roswis to Asgard. Scene change Asgard. Issei can be seen with Roswis and Odin going through a tunnel that was in the Great Wall to enter the Great City. Odin. Good boy, welcome to Asgard. Issei could only look around in amazement. The streets and buildings were built in an older and more rudimentary way. The buildings were very tall. It was even difficult to see them. The three got on a cart that was being pulled by goats that were carrying them. To a palace. Upon entering the palace she could only see gold and things that seemed to be of very good quality. Odin offered to eat Issei, and the albino agreed not to reject his kind gesture. He also invited Roswis, she refused at first, but Issei only took her by the hand. And he offered her a seat like a gentleman while she was all blushing. Issei. What's wrong Ross Chan? It's obvious that you want to sit sitting next to her. Roswis. Odin saw Ms. Envoy sit here, her children and his strongest warriors I, even though I am one of her guards, I still didn't believe I deserved to be able to sit here, she said somewhat depressed. Issei. Don't talk nonsense surprising the platinum-haired girl you are a very strong warrior, and you are also my servant, and I do not accept weak people. Old Odin has to feel honored that a very beautiful woman like you is sitting here he said looking at the girl. The girl just blushed like a tomato at Issei's nice words, and she appreciated the gesture. After a few minutes some warriors had also arrived to eat, but Issei did not like it at all, since the warriors who were there, although they looked at Issei with respect, looked mockingly at Roswis and murmured some things about her. Some maids tried to cheer Roswis up and told her not to pay attention to the comments of those barbarians, but they only continued to be cruel to the poor Valkyrie. The XTRA-1. Come on boy eat looking at Issei eating with Odin Sama is an honor. The XTRA-2. If it's because of that Valkyria, just ignore her, she's a nuisance he said mockingly. The XTRA-3. Wasn't she one of Odin Sama's servants? What is she doing here? The XTRA-4. They say that Thor rejected her before she confessed to him, how pathetic. The comments only hurt the Valkyrie's feelings, but Issei couldn't take it anymore, and with a strong blow, she broke the table where they were eating. Everyone was surprised by what the albino did, but then everyone saw a look that only showed hatred and death. Issei. You idiots angry I won't let you talk bad about her. Issei believed several wolves of more than 5 meters that scared everyone, and the intense power that Issei gave off made them repeat more heavily while they were scared. Odin only saw that with a smile, and the guards who were about to act were taken for the one-eyed old man. The XTRA-1. Come on boy somewhat scary we don't want any harm. Issei. Hahaha <laughs> you won't even scratch me, but you will be devoured by my shadows for the great sin of insulting such a beautiful and good woman. Roswis was surprised by Issei's words, and then blushed. The Issei wolves only attacked the idiots who insulted Roswis, and at that moment only heartbreaking screams could be heard from the warriors who were being devoured by the giant wolves. Odin. Enough, boy, that's enough seeing that the wolves had already killed the warriors. Seeing their lifeless bodies, Issei only calmed down a little and looked at Roswis who, despite having seen the creepier sadistic scene for some, was blushing looking at Issei. Issei. Roswis I'm sorry you saw that, but she couldn't stand them insulting you and undervaluing you when they don't know anything. The silver-haired girl only approached Issei and gave him a tender kiss on the lips, which surprised the boy, but he only reciprocated. Roswis. Quiet, it was the most romantic thing anyone had ever done for me look with a nice smile at Issei. The boy only returned his smile and then saw Odin. Issei. Sorry for dirtying your carpets old man, it's just. Odin. Don't worry kid, in fact I thank you surprising Issei a little hijoho they were the scum of the warriors, they stole secretly from the villages in the distance, and you came saying that they found a great loot, they were going to be executed, but I gave it a better use. Issei. And that was it. Odin. A little test for you, ha ho ho and you obviously passed, now both of you come with me. They both only went with Odin, while well, the guards removed the corpses of the warriors, or in this case the remains mutilated by the wolves. The three of them walked through the corridors of the great palace until they reached a terrace where they could see all of Asgard. Both young people marveled at the beautiful view, while well, Odin walked away and entered another room to look for something. They say. Sorry you had to put up with the insults from those idiots Ross Chan looking at the girl. Ross was. It's okay after all, my beautiful warrior finished them off and defended my honor blushing th, that was the most romantic action that anyone had ever done for me. Issei and Roswis only saw each other for a few seconds, and then slowly took each other and melted into a passionate kiss of love. Odin. Cough cough sorry for interrupting the beautiful moment, you see, we haven't gotten to the point of why I brought you here yet looking with a serious face at both young people. Roswis. P sorry Odin saw me blushing. Issei. Well old man, what was that test for? Odin. Sai boy, I'll be honest with you looking seriously at Issei I brought you to fight a great threat. Issei. Big threat. Bigger than Loki. Odin. I'm afraid so serious. Roswis. You won't talk about her right Odin-sama. Issei. Her. 
Odin. Hela the goddess of death he said seriously the guardian of the dead. They say. Wasn't Hades the god of the dead? Braswis. No Hades takes care of the Greek and human warriors but Hela takes care of those who died dishonorably. They say. And why am I going to fight with her? Odin. Because she plans revenge on her serious. They say. Revenge. Looking seriously at Odin what the hell did they do to make her want revenge? Odin. Sigh well it's a long and complicated story. Old one-eyed Odin narrates, 70 years ago when he was still worshipped as a deity in northern Europe and Loki was only dedicated to doing mischief and helping us in the war against the other gods and beasts, he met a giantess, her name was Ingeboda, it was rare for us gods to have certain romantic encounters with giants, even I have done it. Well, Loki managed to conceive several children with her, three of them Fenrir and Midgardsimer, but she was an excellent warrior, several the gods wanted to spend the night with her, despite being a giant she was beautiful, I warned Loki about that, but he only focused on his antics. One cold night with a full moon, we had gone out hunting, when we returned Loki was outside practicing magic for the war, the moon increased the potential of magic, so he stayed late after everyone else had finished eating. They left and I was left alone with Ingeboda, she served me more alcohol again and again, and I don't remember how I ended up sleeping with her even. After that with guilt I went to my room, but not before seeing Loki enters his with Ingeboda. They say. Well, it's normal that he hates you, you slept with his wife, you damn one-eyed old man holding Odin by the neck, what the hell is wrong with you? Odin. Boy why I egg being hanged by a say please stop, you're suffocating me trying to breathe. They say only let go of Odin, but the albino looked at the one-eyed man with a disappointed face. Odin. Boy, please don't look at me like that somewhat intimidated and embarrassed by how Issei looked at him well, let me continue with the story. Moons after that will happen she announced her pregnancy. The guilt ate me inside and one day I told Loki what I did, I expected him to be angry with me and even hit me or try to kill me, but he didn't even show any sign of courage and only told me that the plan had worked. I didn't understand what he meant until she gave birth. She had given birth to a girl, a girl with half of her body disfigured, the sorcerers tried to take care of that, but it was a curse when she told Loki he already knew it or expected it, since he said it was a side effect he apparently had used my genes as a base and used his power together with the giantess to create a supreme warrior the giantess only wanted a strong son and Loki wanted to create the ultimate weapon for Asgard. They say. Wait, are you saying that crazy bucking Loki planned for you to sleep with her to create a warrior stronger than you? Odin. I'm afraid so boy he said with his head down, they say. When I thought that Loki couldn't be more crazy or sick, I got a surprise. Odin. Well let me continue telling the story. At first I didn't know how to take what Loki said, at first I wanted to reprimand him, but it was also my fault for getting so drunk that night the guilt killed me inside, I have had relationships, even though I was married to humans and giants, but never with a woman other than someone in my family. Sai Loki raised her like his daughter, he even trained her, but the curse on her body extended much further, it manifested itself as if half of her body was destroyed. Rot so the girl grew up with several traumas due to her appearance, and I, as her father, tried to console her and make her feel better. For a while we believed that if the console went and encouraged it, it could overcome those traumas and thus could accept itself, but children are sometimes cruel hell it injured several children to death, several of them for making fun about her appearance the people asked for justice, they saw her as a monster, Loki tried to seal her, but she was very strong, even he and I had a hard time sealing her in the end Thor and Freya had to help us, and we sealed her in Underworld the side that Hades neglected because of the cold and became the goddess of death. She obviously can't get out of there, but I have a suspicion that for some reason she will try to free herself from it. Odin's narration ends. Odin. And well I need you to help me she couldn't finish since Issei had hit him. Issei. You're an idiot those words surprised Roswiss and Odin, and much more because of the blow you were his father you, as a father, must protect your children angry of course Loki is a bucking psychopath, sealing him was the best option to avoid having to kill him, but hell is she, only needed love, understanding, and you only sealed her for defending herself from bullies instead of sealing her, you could have helped her, and also put your stupid subjects in order, Roswiss. Issei please calm down trying to reassure the albino, Bui. I know that this kind of thing bothers you a lot, but we are in Asgard, you cannot hit the father of the Norse gods without causing a war, Lin. Yes master please calm down, Issei just calm down, and Odin stood up and knew that Issei was right in what she said, Issei. And what do you want me to do? Odin. I want you to please prevent that from happening, as you know I have many powerful children, but I doubt that some of them can alone against Hela, and even more so in her kingdom, Issei. Okay, then let's go. And another side, Loki can be seen sitting next to Hela drinking a cup of basically iced coffee while she watched a reliquidate that Loki gave her. Hela. And then this will help me father. Loki. Yes this will free you from this disgusting world. Hela. 
How strange that you helped me after all you also helped to get me sealed seeing Loki. Loki. Well, you are not the only one of my children who is unfortunately sealed haha, old Odin is no longer the same as before, and he is not the god of war he used to be either. Hella. And what do you want in return? Loki. Just free me from my seal and we'll be fine. Hella. And what do you give me in exchange for my help? Loki. I will give you all of Asgard and I, well, I will keep the land since I have a little EU business I want to fix she said with a malicious smile. Hella. And how do I know you won't just betray me and then seal me again? Loki. Because I need your help to defeat someone and you know I don't have enough power to do that. Hella. Well, okay. Loki. Go and take care of that damn hybrid, I can't let it defeat you. You're an important part of my future plan. Hella. Hybrid. Loki. It seems like you don't know haha well I don't blame you, you've been stuck here for a long time, let me tell you. Part 24 Hella. You can see a redeed wearing pajamas and looking at the stars thinking about a certain albino. The Keno. But you is okay. Looking at the king of him. Rias. Yes a Keno alone Sai Ice hasn't arrived yet and I'm worried about him. Asia. Me too Rias Anasama appearing next to a Keno tells me to sleep when Issei San is not here. Hineko. Issei Kun appearing too and said worried about the albino. The other girls from Issei's harem appeared and they all shared the concern that Issei would not be with them like every night. Azara. I'm worried about Oni-chan. Arena. Ice Kun said worried. The Keno. Yes when he is not there I am afraid that she will appear. Zenovia. Who? Rias. Rainer she said with some contempt. Azara. Yes. Diamat. Who is it? Rias. A fallen angel, she kidnapped Asia to steal her sacred gear and attempted to murder Azara for being the drag carrier. Asia. Yes, I'm scared when I remember her. Arena. And how about we all have a sleepover together, that way we won't be afraid. Hineko. Sleepover. Ravel. Well I think that's fine. Sarah. Like a girl's night out. The cane. Yes, we can tell secrets and other things. The girls thought the idea was good and they all went to sleep together in Rhea's room, but they still couldn't fall asleep. Ethan. Oka sent said opening the door. Rias. Ethan what's happening? Ethan dot 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 at OC can I sleep with you? He said somewhat embarrassed and with Yuna and Lily behind him. Rias. Of course, son, come he said, opening his arms. Ethan just ran and hugged his mother, while Yuna and Lily also hugged his other mothers. In a few minutes Ethan had already fallen asleep next to his two sisters' swords. Asia. Kawi it looks like a stuffed animal he said, stroking Ethan's head. Rias. Well maybe Issei isn't there, but we still have Ethan and Yuna and Lily he said hugging the three. The Keno. It even smells like Issei. Said smelling Ethan's scent. The girls only slept some and were calm as they hugged Ethan and the other two girls. Asgard with Issei. Issei and Roswis were preparing for the mission they would both have. Issei had her trusty revolver and her two swords girls that she always had with hers, and on Roswis's side, she had armor on that made her look like quite the warrior. Odin. Well, since you are both ready, I will tell you things clearly, it should take you both to get to Helheim, but I will transport you directly, Hela will probably detect you quickly when she senses my magic so be careful, and if you both can't handle her, just return to the magic circle will return them home. They say. You know who you're talking to, old man, I don't think we need that trip back. Roswis. Aden Sama, do I have a question? Why do you give this task to Say? He doesn't think she's too young for her to try to send him on a suicide mission. Aden because he is the only one who I truly believe can beat her, not only was he able to wield Njanar, he also destroyed it and turned it into a new weapon he said seriously to be honest, I even believe that the boy has no limits, and every once he has one he breaks it, that's why I respect him, and believe he is the only one who can fight it without dying. Issei. Haha thanks for the motivating words Odin, and by the way what did she happen to Thor after he found out about his hammer? Odin. Ha ho ho well he locked himself in his room depressed sigh, sometimes he behaves like a child, well in the end I told the dwarves that they will forge a new weapon for him, now he has an acha he likes it a lot, but I don't think you like it, I lent it after what you did. They say. Mmm, well, good for him, well shall we go. Looking at the Valkyrie. Roswis. Hi. Odin alone created the portal, and they both entered hoping that he would act. They say. And tell me Odin, how will I know who Hela is from there? Odin. Believe me you will know, and boy do not fall into an underground cave, if that happens you will fall into the depths of Niflheim, nor do I suggest the dragon Nidhug has escaped from there. Yui. I love that dragon, it was a very evil one, and it fell there destined to die. Lin. Yes, but they say that he lives there now, trapped in its darkness. They say. I'll be careful. Odin. Take care of yourselves and goodbye. They both only disappeared in the magic circle and appeared in a completely frozen and cold mountain, the breeze was almost frost that hit you, and it was very cold. 
Issei looked round and it was exactly as he imagined, a desolate place with a totally extreme climate, it was very cold, but Issei's flames along with his raincoat kept him warm, but when Issei turned around and saw Roswas, he could tell that he had cold as he was shaking slightly. Issei. Ross-chan, are you okay? Roswas. Why if it's nothing, I train to maintain my temperature in the extreme climates, this is nothing she said somewhat confidently, but you could still tell that she was cold. Issei just sighed and gave the silver-haired girl a kiss and then covered the woman's entire body with her white flames and created a totally different armor and clothing. Issei. Ready, this will protect you from the cold and the armor is also stronger. Roswas only admitted the beautiful armor that Issei gave her, the dress was light, and the armor too, now she had a shield that weighed like a feather, she also had on a white dress that gave off some white flames that made the temperature of the room, silver hair will be regularized. Roswas. It's beautiful looking at the dress thank you Issei kun I will treasure it forever, he said with a blush and a smile, knowing that Issei was worried about her. Issei. Well it's time to move. Roswas. Hi. Both boys walked through the snowy mountains for an hour to reach the great kingdom of Niflheim. They both only walked until they finally saw the kingdom in the distance, but they quickly hid when they heard footsteps that sounded like drums, and both could see to a horde of skeletons with spears, swords and shields marching in unison. They say. Skeletons. I guess it's Hela's personal army. Roswas. Yes, they are the dead and warriors of Helheim, Hela surely sent them when she detected Odin's magic, we just have to stay still until they leave. They say. I'm sorry but we don't have time else, she already knows we're here. Issei only came out of his hiding place and covered Yui in her black flames, and with one slash, he cut the entire horde of dead in half. Issei. They are not as tough as they said, maybe for a normal warrior it would cause them problems. Roswas. Issei Baka, don't be so careless. Issei. I already said that we don't have time, I want to finish as quickly as possible to go play video games with Ethan she said, remembering the promise she made to her son. Roswas. Sigh well come on. They both continued on their way, but a dead man apparently recompassed himself, and when he stood up he launched himself at Issei, but Roswas blocked his attack with his shield and split him in half, with his sword apparently covered in white fire. Roswas. Incredible looking at his sword that had fire similar to Issei's. Issei. I also potified your sword he said, showing a red jewel that had the silver-haired woman's sword in the handle in the jewel I put a little of my power like I did with Asia in her ring, now you can use my power to fight, when you I make you just tell me and I will recharge it. Roswas. Hi. They both just continued on their way and after a few minutes they had both reached the streets of a ghost city, the streets were completely desolate and you could only hear their footsteps and the wind that kept them company. The buildings were all neglected and it was also covered in snow. Roswas. I can't believe that they destroyed the walls that cover Helheim and burned its guards looking behind him, that you could only see how the wall was completely destroyed and also had black fire everywhere, Aden Sama told us to go to Screet. Issei. No, he just recommended it he never said that we would specifically have to be silent if we wanted to pass. Issei. Don't worry, after all, she surely already knows that someone is walking through her domain when she feels Odin's magic in the portal and feels the energy of my flames. Roswas. But. Issei. Don't worry Ross Chan stroking his head nothing bad will happen. Roswas. I hope you're right, Baka she said a little blushing. They both continued walking and noticed that no one was there, not even a single dead person, everything was desolate. Issei. Why is this city so lonely? Shouldn't there be the people who died? It's because most of them are already under the snow of Niflheim. They both just got on guard, but when they saw who it was, they saw a small girl with decaying features and the height of Kaneko or Ravel. Issei. And you are? My name is Ivor Bowing. Roswas. Be careful, Issei Kun. I have never heard that the dead can interact getting into battle pose. Issei. Don't worry Ross Chan if he wanted to hurt us he would have done it when we had our guard down calming the Valkyrie. Issei only approached the girl and knelt down at her height. Issei. Tell me little one, why don't you attack us? Ivor. It wouldn't make sense, I don't have the power or the ability, and I don't think I can fight your powerful flames, but tell me, you want to go to Hela's castle, right? Roswas. How do you know that? Ivor. Why else would they be here I can take them, do you accept my help? Roswas. No thanks we can. Issei. Sure, let's go he said, taking the girl's hand. Roswas. Wait to say we can't she is. Issei. A girl, yes she is undead but she is still a girl, besides I don't detect any lies in her, so come on she said carrying the girl, and I also know what she wants and why she helps us. Roswas. And that's it. Issei. You want to enter Valhalla, right? Looking at the girl. Ivor. Yes, that's what I want, when Odin Sama sees my courage he will allow me to enter Valhalla and I can leave here. Issei. Well if you help us I promise you that you will come with us and I will tell old Odin to let you enter Valhalla. Ivor. T thank you very much sir, I hope he can fulfill it he said happily. Roswas. 
You know that even if he helps us we won't be able to do anything, right? I say. I won't allow her to stay here, even if I have to take her out myself I will do it. Those words surprised the girl and she just smiled, but she felt a warmth in her chest which was strange since she was a dead person, but for some reason she felt safe being with Issei. Change of scene, Ethan can be seen training in the courtyard of the large mansion, while his mothers looked on happily. Ethan? Okasan. All. Yes son. Ethan? Can I go eat ice cream with my sisters? All. Sure, son, see. Ethan happily went with his two sisters' swords to the refrigerator to have some ice cream, while the girls felt what it was like to be a mother completely. Rias. How cute it is, Akeno. And it's very innocent and cute, something like ice cun, Asia. And his smile is beautiful like Issei Sans. Bizarre. It's like a small version of him. The girls just sighed watching the boy happily eat his ice cream with his sisters. Arena. What a pity that ice cun is not here. Zenovia. If he would like to be here. Hineko. And why aren't we going to see him, maybe he would like us to be there with him. Ravel. Well I think it's a good idea. Sarah. Then let's go. All. Hi. Ethan was eating his ice cream calmly, but his senses warned of an attack that was heading towards him, and some swords of blue light tried to impale Ethan, but he dodged them, and the others deflected them with Yuna and Lily. All. Ethan they shouted worriedly, Hiba, Yu and Gasper, upon hearing the roar, also came out and saw Loki in the sky looking at the boys with an arrogant smile. Loki. Hahaha <laughs> sorry kid, but noticing that you are the disgusting son of that damn hybrid made me want to kill you. Ethan. Loki, what are you doing here, you damn idiot. Loki. I just wanted to see the son of the idiot that I will soon kill for the last time. Hahaha <laughs> very soon none of you will be born and you will disappear while time takes the life from you. Ethan. Shut up you idiot you haven't won yet Odo-san is still alive looking angrily at the god. Loki. Maybe but not for long, I'm leaving, let's see Braddy said, disappearing into a portal. Ethan. That bastard angry Okus and we have to go to Odo-san now. All. Hi. But Issei and Roswis. Roswis and Issei only calmly walked through the ghost city while leaving a trail of fire as they got rid of Hela's warriors. Issei. And tell me Ivor, what is a child doing here? According to Roswis, people who come here only die in a shameful way. Ivor. Well you're right, I didn't die as a warrior, you see a long time ago when I was still alive, I and my family were simple farmers who worshipped Odin and Thor, but one very cold winter we didn't have anything to eat, my parents tried to ration food as best they could. Food but at that time I was sick and one night I stopped breathing and died. They say. And that's how you ended up here, TSCK Odin system is very stupid. When I return, I will tell him and he will change it. Roswis. Well I think you're right because of the way the system is, some good people end up here. Ivor. I also tried to look for my brothers, but apparently I was the only one who died that way. They say. I'm sorry stroking the little girl's head it must have been hard being here alone. Ivor. Why are you sorry, it wasn't your fault. They say. No person should go through this, when he flies I will tell Odin to fix his system, so that children and people like you go to Valhalla and don't stop here. Ivor. Why would you do it when you just know me? They say. Let's say I feel empathy, you know you're not the only one who has suffered in her life, I have too, and I don't want a girl like you to be alone for the rest of eternity in this place he said, caressing the girl's head. The girl only saw Issei and a small tear fell down her cheek, and she hugged Issei's neck. After a flash of lightning we walked and arrived at the entrance of the castle, but the giant door was closed. Ivor. I know another entry. Issei. Don't worry, there's no need. Issei stretched out his hand, and a sea of black fire destroyed the door, allowing the three boys to enter. They say. Come on. The three of them just entered and saw that the entrance was empty, not even a single guard was there. They say. It seems that the Lady Goddess of Death is not there seeing that there was no one let search the castle. Roswis. Hi. The boys only searched and walked through the corridors of the Great Ice Castle, but there was no trace of life. The boys finally stopped in a large dining room, where a fireplace illuminated the entire room with its green flames and also on the table. There was rotten and damaged food. They say. Don't tell me she eats that pointing to the spoiled food. Roswis. Don't eat anything, it has a spell that does not affect us, that is its true form, but for a warrior or a normal person, it should be seen as delicious food, if you eat it you will never want to leave, and you will become one of its soldiers. Behind the boys are some skeleton ogres who tried to attack the three, but Issei quickly took out his revolver and fired his bullets wrapped in lightning, killing them. Ivor. How does he have the power of Thor-sama? Seeing Issei and her revolver. Issei. I'll tell you later now come on. Some guards appeared to defend the rooms, but Issei only destroyed them by shooting with blue rose, Ivor in a moment lowered Issei's arms and guided them to the throne room where a black wolf glove was waiting for them. Roswis. Garm wait, he wasn't guarding the doors then. Ivor. Good work Nephilim she said sitting on her throne. Issei. 
So it's you, right Hella looking at the girl. The girl just smiled back and snapped her fingers, as she did so a purple mask covered the girl, and then showed her true form, she was a woman with several parts of her body covered by a purple mass. Hella. Hello Nephilim looking at Issei. Issei. So being a girl was just a trick. Hella. Haha I just wanted to see up close the person who not only wielded Thor's hammer with ease, but also destroyed it and made it a better weapon she said looking at the revolver. Roswis. You are disgusting, making up a story and taking the form of a girl just to satisfy your curiosity. Hella. Stop that, Valkyrie, I'm not as bad as people think on the other hand, your bosses are she said with a smile. Roswis. What? Hella. Ivor did exist and if she died from an illness in the winter, you will see when a person dies they have the opportunity to go to another world, but in the case of the girl, she ended up here not because she died from an illness, no she suffered more than that. I say. What do you mean? Hella. When a demon, angel or fallen person dies they say that they disappear the truth is that no, when they die their body disappears, but their essence does not, their essence lasts to be able to be reincarnated into something else, even though sometimes there are exceptions. I say. Exceptions. Hella. Odin currently changed the system, and he no longer manages the other world as before, he received the warriors while I received the sick, the elderly, among others, even beings that Hades does not want in his world, after the system changed, some emissaries of the biblical god came to look for those souls to give them another chance but, their memories are still here, and I carry many of their memories and sufferings. I say. I see, I don't really blame you for hating Odin and the other gods, but tell me what you plan. Hella. Isn't it obvious? I no longer have anything to do here, there are only rotting bodies that don't even have their own thoughts, the only company here is my wolf and her. I say. Her. Roswis. You still plan to destroy Odin Sama and the other gods. Hella. Yes, I still hate him for sealing me here, but thanks to that I was able to feel all those emotions, both negative and positive, and now I want to feel mine. I say. Well, I know that idiot Odin deserves it, but you still plan to hurt innocent people, and I can't even allow that. Hella. Then you are my enemy. Ella just snapped her fingers and the big wolf of hers prepared to attack. I say. Garmidi snaps his fingers making a three-headed wolf appear Cerberus. The two giant wolves looked at each other and both pounced and began to bite each other, destroying some walls and beams that supported the giant castle. Ella just smiled in a sadistic and macabre way as she looked at Issei. Hella. You surprise me, what I have heard from you completely exceeds my expectations. I say. Thank you I guess, but you know I don't want to fight you looking at the goddess. Hella. I know you're a good boy, so I won't kill you or the Valkyrie, but you won't stop me from getting out of here. Ella only launched herself against Issei, and the albino only unsheathed her swords, and then began to attack as well. Both of them only destroyed the castle with the wolves, and their blows and attacks echoed through the desolate rooms and corridors of the castle. Issei took out his wings and began to fly at high speed to attack the goddess. Ella launched swords and magical attacks towards Issei, and the albino only dodged her attacks with mastery and skill. Issei at one point caught up with Hella and managed to make a cut on her cheek and left arm. Hella. I must admit that it's not bad for a rookie, but you still have millennia to go before you can catch up with me she said, launching more attacks towards Issei. Issei. Don't worry, I learned quickly he said, making swords made of light appear to counteract Hella's attacks. Issei only increased the intensity of the fight more and more, and so did Hella. At one point she created a gigantic axe and tried to cut Issei in half, and the albino only blocked her attack with her swords, and when they collided a large crater was made under Issei, due to the strong blow that the goddess threw. Issei just smiled and seeing that the goddess was defenseless, he created several swords of light around her and threw them towards her. Ella only stepped back and dodged with several swords and broke the ones that were made of light, but some grazed her body, making several cuts. Ella. Dog bite by saying that, Hella's wolf stopped fighting with Cerberus infused with her, giving her more strength and speed, she could also make ice clones and create corpses with weapons to fight. Hella now wore a kind of second skin made from her wolf and had her head on her shoulder, as if it were a kind of rug. Issei. This is getting interesting with a smile. Issei created several clones made of shadows and angels of light, who began to destroy the ice clones and corpses with Cerberus. Ella was a few moments faster than Issei, even the head of the wolf that she had on her shoulder bit Issei's arm, almost tearing it off. Issei. You stinking flea covering her arm with fire burning the wolf's jaw suit to let it go. Issei only healed her damaged arm and looked at the head of the wolf that was licking the blood that Issei had released from the bite. Ella. Garm has a will of his own he is one of the few friends I have ever had stroking the wolf's head. Issei. Friends. Ella. My condition has always made people howl showing the decaying part of her face. Ella. Old Odin told me to ignore them because in the future they would be kissing my shoes but like every child, I wanted to play and when I defended myself from those who mistreated and bothered me, they only saw me as a monster she said angrily. Issei. 
I understand, I know what it feels like to have an idiot hit you and mistreat you for no reason, Hella. No, you do not know she said throwing flames towards Issei, but the albino countered them with his own, Issei. Of course I know let them torture you, before I was what I am now I was just a normal boy with a shitty life she said, launching against Hella throughout my childhood, I was alone just like you I always took care of myself, just like you Issei and Hella clashed weapons making a big shock wave, I also know what it's like to be rejected by everyone, even for almost two years my classmates at my school beat and tortured me, Hella could only see eyes full of anger as she remembered her past, and she saw herself reflected in those eyes. Issei. Damn even my ex-girlfriend cheated on me and I saw when she did it, Issei pushed Hella back and with a fist full of fire and her anger he hit her in the face, making her crash against a mountain. Issei. Throughout my life I have been mistreated, belittled, and tortured so don't say I don't understand you, because I do I understand you perfectly because you are like me she she said she looking at the goddess rising, Issei. Even when that idiot Auden told me why they sealed the blow because you had every right to defend yourself and kill those idiots, I even understand perfectly why you are trying to take revenge, Hella. Then why are you stopping me looking at Issei, Issei? Because killing them is not the solution, believe me I really wanted to kill and torture those idiots who killed me before, but it's not done, Hella. And why not? Issei. Because my girls would get sad and get upset with me he said with a smile, they are the only thing that keeps me sane, maybe you don't understand it, because you never had someone who would support you before other than Odin when you were a girl, but I will make you understand even by the blows, Hella. Haha, ha, ha. you know I haven't had a battle like this in years, and even if I respect that conviction, I won't let you beat me skull armor when saying that, an armor made of bones and behind his back, he had two giant arms which extended like wings. Issei just looked at the goddess and let all her power flow causing flames of black and white fire to expand throughout the area. Issei. Well then, goddess of death, looking at the goddess who had a smile well, let's dance she said with a smile. Issei just took out a revolver and started shooting at Hella, but with her hands full of bones, she only stopped them or cut the bullets with her swords. Hella reached Issei, and they both attacked, clashing swords, but Hella's arms grabbed Issei's wings and used force to tear them off. Hella. I'm sorry about this boy she said with some sadness. Iwi and Lin. Love. Hella with her skeleton arms, tore off Issei's two wings in one fell swoop, making him scream in pain. Issei. Aiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiii
Ella only stood up as the arms on her back slowly disintegrated. They say. Give up, you don't have a chance against me, Ella. Nobody will tell me what to do and Mechie minus a brat like you. Ella launched herself against to say again, but he only grabbed her by the neck and threw her towards the remains of the castle. Ella was already very badly injured. The few blows and attacks of the night greatly damaged the goddess. She felt that every cell in her body wanted to disappear and rest. The only thing that kept her standing was her goal of getting out of that prison where they sealed her. The knight alone walked slowly towards Hela, while next to her Cerberus also walked towards the goddess with her love. Hela was able to stand with many bruises and bumps as she watched the knight and the three-headed dog approach her. And music, Lin. Master, I think that's enough she said, appearing next to Roswas. The knight just ignored her and stood in front of the goddess, and when he snapped her fingers, chains made of her shadows had taken her arms and feet, preventing her from moving. Hela. What is this looking at the chains that absorbed her power and strength? They say. Those chains will absorb your vitality little by little, now I will only give you one chance, goddess Hela. Her armor little by little disappeared and her left wing became wide again, once again showing Issei's face next to Yui. Issei. I know what you had to go through and I know you want revenge, but that is not the solution and your father wants to apologize to you. Hela. Loki. He would never do something like that, Issei. I'm talking about Odin, he always regretted sealing you and not being able to remove the curse from you, and he wants to apologize to you, although he told me to stop you, in his eyes I saw regret and sadness, he misses his daughter. Dot. At that moment she Hela she had a little flashback of her childhood. Flashback, a young Hela can be seen crying over her marks and old Adindan, realizing this, tries to console her. Odin. Come on Hela Chan, don't let that kind of thing affect you he said trying to cheer up the girl, Hela. And what do you know about this looking at Odin while she cried sniff sniff, they look at me like a monster when I go out for a walk, the children make fun of me and throw stones at me, my father says the curse is temporary, but I feel it spread through my body every time. Once again he said showing the marks on his body, Odin. You know Hela Chan, when I lost my eye, the other gods made fun of me, calling me one eyed or saying that he would die quickly in battle, but do you know why I changed it? Hela. Why? Odin. I exchanged it for wisdom. Hela. For wisdom. Odin. That's right Hela Chan, with that I showed that appearance does not demonstrate power, and I am sure that in the future you will lose the curse. Hela. Do you really believe that? Odin. Sure like those stories that you read when you sleep, in the future that Prince Charming will come who will take the curse away from you and love you as you are. Hela. Do you really believe that? Odin. Of course, you just have to have faith, come, let's go eat a delicious roast pig, my little one. Hela just hugged the one-eyed old man, and they both went to eat that day. Then flashback, Hela. Tell me, do you really think he wants to talk to me? They say. Of course, releasing Hela and I think I can also remove the curse from your body. Hela just looked at Issei surprised by what she said. Hela. Ah really dot 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 you're not playing with me right? They say. I would never play with such a serious visa, so please come with me extending his hand. Hela at that moment saw Issei as her prince, the prince that Aden told her that she would come to remove the curse from her, the prince that she always hoped and dreamed of. Roswas. Issei Kun I don't think that's a good idea. Issei. Auden said stop her she didn't say how, besides she tried to help her with her curse and also fix her family problems, that old man would have to thank me. Hela just jumped on Issei and hugged him, surprising him. Hela. Thank you sniff sniff my hero, my prince she said hugging and crying into Issei's chest. Issei just smiled and returned the hug as she caressed hers. Head. Hela. But I can't leave without Garm and her. Issei. Her. Hela. Follow me. The three walked towards what was left of the castle and went to a room that was not destroyed by strong protective seals. The room was spacious and in the center there was a blue light that did not allow us to see what it was. Issei. What is that? Hela. She was the last person to arrive in Helheim, she died without honor, but it was not her fault, she was manipulated. Issei. Manipulated. Hela. She had fallen in love with someone, but then she was subjected to a mental manipulation spell, and then she was murdered by one of the acquaintances with whom she was in love, and since she was not human, she could not adapt to the new system. Issei. I understand. Issei just looked seriously at the person who was inside a crystal that floated thanks to a magic circle, and when the blue light from it diminished, Issei paled a little when he recognized the person. Issei. Damn the girls are going to kill me looking at the person inside the glass who is apparently in an induced coma. Roswis. What? Because. Who is it? Issei. Sai well, according to Riaz and Azara the name she used was Yuma, but a real name is Rainer looking seriously at the girl. Part 25 The Truth. Issei only looked seriously at the person who was in the middle of the magic circle, while she explained to Roswis who she was. Her fallen body was floating with her eyes closed as if she were asleep, unaware that she was being watched. Roswis. 
but that's impossible what is a fallen angel doing in Helheim, Hela. I don't know, when I received her I made her sleepy, but now that I'm leaving I don't want to leave her here alone looking at the black haired girl, I say. You said she was manipulated looking at Hela how was that, Hela. It's better that we see it for ourselves she said making a spell to see Raynor's memories, home memories, in the moment reality changed and Azazel could be seen looking at Raynor. Azazel. This is your mission Raynor, but have a little discretion and care, she is already part of the Gremory entourage, do not try to cause a warrior, just keep an eye on hers. Raynor. Hi Azazel Sama. The girl now had a tender and innocent appearance, although she still retains her wings and her very good body, she is the daughter of an ancient fallen that Azazel once knew, Azazel accepted her into her ranks for that very reason, because she I knew that fallen one. After the talk that both had, we see how the fallen girl watches Azara and her brothers very carefully. She thought it was strange that Azazel was afraid or interested in people like them. She didn't care and just wanted to leave, but one day he saw a brunette very similar to Azara and her other brothers, the brunette at that time was preventing a girl from being gaped by some idiots, in the end he tried to save her, achieving his goal, but the gang members only saw that their prey had escaped through that they used him as a torture toy, or as a punching bag, and in the end they only left Issei on the ground bleeding from cuts or having several bruises from the many blows. From that moment on, Raynor found Issei more interesting than Azara and the others. Raynor. Why does she help her if she doesn't have the power to defend herself? Why doesn't she just ignore him? Why doesn't she just turn a blind eye and leave? Those questions were beginning to eat into the fallen girl's brain, why does she try so hard for other people if they despise him, mistreat him? He is tortured and hates, because he is still standing and because he doesn't just send everything to shit. After that, the fallen woman watched Issei as if it were her favorite program. She also knew about Issei's mistreatment at her school, since she had infiltrated several times to gather information from Azara. The woman only saw Issei with some pity. She knew that he would not do something like that, since she also watched him as she did with Azara and her brothers, and at no time did she see Issei do something like that. One day the interest she had towards Issei changed completely when she saw Issei rescue a cat that was being beaten by some idiots. Issei, although he faced the criminals, could not win, but in exchange he received the beating for the poor cat, thus saving him. That action surprised the girl and at the same time made her blush, she had received a crush from Cupid when she saw Issei save several people, and although he would only receive torture and insults, he did not get depressed and continued forward, she wanted to go with the brunette and help him support him and maybe be something more, since she was a fall she had nothing to lose, and if she could be with the person she loves, she would leave everything behind to be with him, although she knew clearly that she couldn't since she was on a mission, so she just swore to herself that when that silly mission was over, she would only ask. One day she gathered the strength to ask Issei out, but he only refused since the brunette said that he already had a girlfriend, that disappointed Raynor, but then one day when she was watching she saw his supposed girlfriend going with a guy to the warehouse, where they kept the sports things and she could see her girlfriend having hex with another guy, that surprised her, but then she quickly hid since she heard that someone else was coming, Raynor could see from some trees how Issei walked to where they were. And when he saw them he just shed several tears and tore off what looked like a couple's necklace. Although it hurt her to see Issei cry because of a bitch, she was a little happy because now thanks to that she had a chance with Issei, after that she only saw how Issei walked home completely depressed, and when he saw that one of his classmates was going to being run over, he just pushed him taking his place. Rainer saw that and felt her heart stop as she watched Issei fly across the street crashing into a wall, and the sound of her ribs and bones breaking was the only thing that sounded in her head. She quickly went down to help Issei, but saw that she was already unconscious. Rainer. Issei let's react Issei moving chestnut, the brunette only had a line of blood going down his head and mouth while he was breathing hard, the girl just hugged Issei with all her strength while calling an ambulance, since she couldn't use magic we had many spectators around her, and it could also alert to the Gremory girl and her entourage. She went with Issei to the hospital to check on her secret love, and the doctors only said that she would survive, but maybe she rested for a few weeks due to the heavy damage her body received. In the end she alone went home still worried about Issei, but that same night she was attacked by three well-known fallen and hated by many, she tried to defend herself, but unfortunately they outnumbered her and also in combat experience, and in the end, she was defeated by the three fallen, and they carried her with a certain dark shadow that watched them from afar. The Kabyle. So the rumors that you work for that idiot Azazel and the Grigori organization were true looking at the fallen one you see I agree with training humans, but apparently Azazel and I have some differences, so that boy who do you watch what kind of power it has. Rainer. Leave it, he doesn't possess any sacred gear he's just human. The Kabyle. Hey and why are you watching him so much? The fallen one just stayed silent, but that was enough for the cause to notice. The Kabyle. Ha 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 so the girl fell in love with a pathetic human ha 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 ha. The girl just stayed silent, but she felt angry hearing the cadre speak badly of Issei. The Kabyle. 
and then who is your main objective? The fallen one only closed her mouth like a tomb, but Kakabiel's companions only tortured her so that she would speak. Kakabiel. Oh, so that Grimmery brat has the Sekiruite as one of her pieces, and looking at the fallen one well, what does it matter, she's not even half as strong as me, the cadre only took one of the feathers from the fall well from now on little girl you will work for me, he said with a devilish smile, Rainer. Nuo never trying to get loose, the Kabiel. Don't worry, if you resist, I'll tell my friends to go play a little with your Romeo who is still in a coma in the hospital she said with a smile, the girl, upon hearing that, just gave up and Kakabiel smiled, the Kabiel. Haha good girl, and calm down, it will only hurt a lot, but only at the beginning, and I will not do anything to that boy, he is just cannon fodder, and I am not interested he said simply, and by the time it is finished you will have great power. Saying that, the fallen body changed while she screamed in pain for what the cadre are doing to her. After a few minutes of suffering for the girl she had totally changed now she was more voluptuous, she had a more mature body and face, and she wore a very provocative outfit. After that day the girl followed orders from the cadre, but a part of her looked in the direction where Issei was admitted to the hospital, something deep inside her told her to go there and see someone, but she didn't know who. Or that, in the end she just ignored that feeling and continued under Kakabiel's command. After she was killed a few days later by Azara and Rias when they were both trying to save Asia, she had appeared in her original form in a cold and snowy place. When she looked around she saw that she was being watched by a figure that was watching her. She was in parts like a skeleton but also human and then fell asleep. End of memories. The albino was upset and even stomped his foot which cracked the floor and made the room shake. Not only was she manipulated, but Mirio was also unfairly manipulated, and also apparently she had fallen in love with him, even though he was pathetic and she couldn't defend herself. Issei. That bastard Kakabiel, she knew she had to kill him instead of giving him to Azazel he said angrily when I go there, I will kill him and torture myself in every possible way. Roswis. Issei I know it makes you angry, it makes me angry too, but he's frozen, and now we have to solve this first. Hella. Yes, well I wanted to leave, but I can't leave her like this, and if I try to get her out of her, her body will only deteriorate, and also and I can't abandon her, she has already suffered a lot. Issei. Well, Roswis go with old Odin. Roswis. What? But I can't leave you here. Issei. I won't leave hell alone, much less Rainer, not after seeing the truth. Roswis. Yes, but you can't do anything anymore, she no longer belongs to the world of the living. Issei. Yes, she knows, it's just that she bothers me squeezing her fists, it bothers me that I didn't save her, because I wasn't strong enough. Those words only surprised the girls, but they were taken out of their shock by two girls' swords. Yui. Well master, I think there is something she can do to get her out of here, Lin. Yes, but you will have to use your creation god form, Issei. If it is to save her I will do it without hesitation. Yui just returned to her human form and Issei unsheathed Lin. Yui. Well master, now you are going to use something that the ancient god of the bible used to create her angels, so you can resurrect the fallen one. Issei. Well it's time looking at Rainer. Issei. I who dominate the heavens, I will defeat my enemies with my strength, and I will defeat the enemies of this world with my fire. I destroyed the darkness with my light, and I laugh at hate and pain. I am the king of the archangels and god of creation, and you will burn in my eternal flames that will burn your sins. Issei. Night of creation, Issei only used that angel form again, and the enormous power that amazed Hela, since she thought that she did not have another transformation as powerful as the one before. Yui. Okay master now she didn't finish since Issei moved on his own, as if he knew what he had to do. Issei only approached the girl and when he was in front of her, he spread her wings, letting all her power flow. Issei. Angel Rainer, as the god of this world I have seen your memories, and now I will give you a second chance, so that you can be happy with the person you love. The now god was modifying the magic circles that held the girl in the air and began to say some chants. Issei, I have immersed myself in the greatest depths of hell and I defeated thousands of monsters. I will collect your soul and body so that you can be reborn again. You, that noble soul who died in combat, ordered you to be reborn as a new being so that you can live and be happy again. After saying that, the entire room was covered by a white light that dazzled everyone and in the end, Raynor could be seen being carried by Issei in a wedding manner, leaving her on the floor. Roswis only touched the girl and noticed that she was cold and that she was shaking, but Issei's flames and wings only gave her warmth. The girl little by little opened her eyes, and the first thing she saw was Hela, Yui, Roswis and Issei in her archangel form. Rainer. He. Where am I looking around why am I so cold and who are you? Pointing to Issei. Issei. My work here is done, but before I leave, goddess of death Hela pointing at the goddess. Hela. Hey. Issei. You have shown that you have a good heart, and regardless of the fact that you did not know this girl you still saved her, for all the damage and suffering you have received, I will give you compensation, as an apology for what the other gods did. 
As he said that, a white fire along with a light covered Hela, and in a few minutes Hela's body no longer had any sign of her curse, and in short, she was a very beautiful black-haired woman with the body of a goddess. Hela just looked at her reflection creating a mirror with magic, and when she saw that her curse had disappeared, she alone was able to let out some tears and touch the healed parts of her body with joy. Issei only turned back to normal, but the girl saw that Issei had two more pairs of wings, now Issei had four pairs of black and white wings. Issei just fell to his knees somewhat tiredly and looked at Rainer while she smiled. Rainer. W who are you? Somewhat nervous, but she felt like she had known this albino boy for a long time. Issei. Haha maybe you don't recognize me, but I'm Issei Haidu, the boy you always watched she said with a smile. Only upon seeing that smile did Rainer recognize him, even though he was now albino, he recognized him, the brown boy who, no matter what, always helped others. The girl just hugged Issei tightly as she cried, and Hela also joined her hug, thanking Issei for removing the curse from her. Rainer. Sniff hello Issei with a smile I missed you so much sniff. Hela. Thank you sniff thank you really crying into Issei's chest. Issei. Well Rainer, Hela see if both of them let's go home. All. Hi. The boys just smiled and said yes, Hela took her things, and Issei and Roswis explained to Rainer what happened to her and how she got to Helheim. The boys were now walking, Hela hugging Issei alongside Rainer until they reached the sealer barrier that was what prevented Hela from passing. Roswis. True, we forgot, how are you going to pass Hela Sama? Hela. Like this she said, taking out a relic which she used to break the barrier. Issei. And that. Hela. Loki gave it to me. Roswis. Loki. He was here. Hela. Don't worry, he's not here, and I won't help him with his plan anymore. Issei. Plan. Hela. Well you'll see. Change of scene, we see how old Odin increases his aura as he feels the seal being destroyed as the factions arrive on the scene. Serzichas. Odin don't know, what does this mean? Odin. The boy has failed he said something sad and sad for Issei and Roswis, now an evil much worse than Loki is coming. While I was meeting and preparing, Issei's companions and children arrived at the scene with Azazel. Rias. Ani Sama, what's wrong? Where is Ice? Serzichas. Well you see. Odin. It's coming he said seriously. At that point a large portal opened, the leaders felt a very dark and dark aura, but apparently it did not show aggression. Four people came out of the portal, two of them were Issei and Roswis, and the other two had a raincoat with a hood that covered their faces. All. Ice Ice Kun Issei Kun Oni Chan Brother Odo-san. Ethan. Odo-san hugging Issei we were worried about you he said hugging his father tightly. Odin. Boy, the seal was broken, I thought you were defeated. Issei. Well, before speaking I want to say that please don't go crazy looking seriously at Odin, but you have something to settle with her pointing to one of the hooded women. The girl only took off her hood, showing a pale black woman with short hair that the old man recognized with some difficulty. Odin. H. Hella he said in sock when he saw his face and body that was not decompassed by his cursed D, is that really you? Hella. Hello father looking at the one-eyed old man who only approached the girl crying for her only eye while she touched her face. Odin. How? Hella. The boy on your left looking at Issei took the curse off me and stopped me from doing something crazy he said looking at him with a slight blush. Odin. Daughter sniff sniff I know Odin for having sealed you but. Hella. Yes, I'm still angry with you but he made me change my mind and he also took away my curse, that's why I'm not going to destroy Asgard or harm anyone. Odin only hugged her while she cried a little and Hella, although she had forgotten the feeling of a hug or any sign of affection, also hugged her father tightly while she also cried. Issei only saw that with a smile, and so did her son. Serzichas. Hey, can you explain to us what's going on? Issei. Better get comfortable, this will take a while. Time skip. After an explanation where they say and explain about Hela and Issei's mission, everyone understood and also felt a little pity and joy for the goddess. Sorrow because she was sealed and abandoned unjustly and joy to know that her something was hers, and she also removed the curse from her. Odin. Well sniff daughter, I don't want to ruin the moment, but I have to ask, what are your intentions? She asked wiping her tears and seriously, Hella. I didn't come to fight, just as I told Issei Sama I only came to talk, Helheim no longer needs someone to govern it, now I am free and take the opportunity that Issei Sama gave me to be happy and live away from that disgusting place. Michael. Hella san, even if his intentions are good, we still need someone to guard that place, and also if he wants to stay in this world, he has to get used to the new rules. Hella. Issei Sama is right, they are idiots and chickens while she stood next to Issei, and the albino laughed a little. Azazel. Well, although the boy has removed your curse and given you a chance, we know that you made deals with Loki, and we can't trust you he said seriously. Hella. I know, that's why I bring you a gift or proof that I'm on her side she said, taking out the amulet that Loki gave her. The leaders were only amazed to see the amulet that the supposed god of deception gave to the goddess of death. Michael. That thing said amazed. Azazel. 
Yes looking seriously at the amulet, Odin. My father told me about these beings taking and seeing the amulet with his only eye, how did Loki get one of these? They had been sealed. Hella. Well, just like that idiot said pointing at Michael what do you think is a deal? Michael. Are you threatening us? They say. Michael calling the aforementioned's attention calm down, okay. He said watching with a serious and intimidating look that scared the angel a little, Hella. No, but I know that that idiot Loki, according to what Asay Sama told me, is a nuisance to him, so I will tell you everything I know and in exchange I live in this world without being bothered. Azizel. Well, that seems fair to me. Serziches. Hey, don't you think you responded too quickly? Azizel. According to what they told us, she no longer has that curse that traumatized her in her childhood, and she also gave us that amulet all for one person she said looking at Asay. Serziches. Ooh oh I got it, haha ha the harem king looking at Asay and Hela. Asay. Shut up you idiots she said something annoyed by that nickname, Rias. Excuse me but what are those amulets if you may know? Michael. Listen calling everyone's attention God spoke to me about those beings, according to my father and many demons, and fallen from the old factions joined together to stop them, and they believed they had eliminated their cults, but if there is a trace of it left, it must be eliminated he said seriously, Auden. I agree, my father trembled when he told me those stories, whatever it is, I don't want to, I don't want to feel the same he said, while a small shiver ran down his spine. After the leaders spoke and accepted the goddess's conditions, they made a couple of rules so that she would not intervene in the new system, but the voice of a certain redeed caught everyone's attention. Rias. Ice, who is she? Looking at the other hooded woman who was hugging Issei's arm, and that bothered some. Auden. Is he one of you warriors? Looking at Hela. Hela. No, my only company after centuries of loneliness. They say. Sigh well I will tell them and show them, but promise me that they won't attack her, or they will go crazy when they see her face looking at the girls. Rias. Why? Issei tried to explain a little subtly so that they would understand, but a certain sadist approached her and looked under her hood, and when he saw her face, he just jumped back and got on guard and started shooting lightning bolts at her. Ikeno. Issei, stay away from her reasoning while she had a serious and angry look, seeing that they were going to attack her friend, Hela only increased her aura and took out a sword to fight. Rias. Akeno, what's wrong? Akeno. It's her it's Rainer she said with anger. The boys were only a little surprised but quickly got on their guard and Azara put on her armor to fight. Bang bang. Upon hearing the loud sound, everyone saw Issei with her revolver shooting into the air to make them pay attention. Issei. Sigh she knew this would happen as she put Rainer behind him. Rias. Ice. Because you protect her from her is. They say. Guys, she's a good person while taking off Raynor's hood she was manipulated by Kakabiel while stroking her hair by the way, Azazel, I hope you've gotten all the information out of that disgusting cadre, because I'm going to pay him a visit. Azara. But Oni-chan, she tried to impale me with a spear and almost killed Asia. Yuri. Yes, she is crazy, and she betrayed Azazel sensei. Raynor. And with what right do you say that, you fourth class bitch she said angrily when she saw Yuri while you were dating Issei you slept with other humans, even though he loved you with all his heart, even at the time before he was what he is now he rejected me for you, I honestly don't know what he saw in you, you're just a disgusting bitch, Yuri. Like. Issei. Rainer, please calm down sigh Hella, can you use that illusion again, so they can see Rainer's memories. Hella. Of course it won't be a problem. After everyone saw Rainer's memories and Yuri felt like shit and Ethan understood what happened to his father and why he didn't behave the same way he treats the others, everyone saw Rainer in a different light. A more comprehensive way. Azazel. I see, that's why your strange personality change, but I still don't know what a fallen angel is like in Helheim. Vichela. I think that is my fault, after the god of the bible died I took charge of the system, but it still has flaws due to its modification, but now it is alive, how was that? Yui. Master revived her with his power of God of Creation, an old spell that Lin's creator used to take good souls and receive them as guardian angels. Michael. That's why you are stronger and your aura more powerful, you were also able to increase your powers. They say. I think so, hey Michael, can you explain to me why I have two other wings she said, taking out her wings, surprising that she now had four wings. Michael. It can't be. Ethan. Odo Sen was stronger now. They say. What? Michael. You see the number of wings represents the amount of power and category that angels and fallen ones have, for example I have 12, but I only get two so as not to attract attention. Azazel. But you, you got two more pairs of wings, and seeing that before you could easily surpass us, it seems that now you are much stronger, ha 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 damn, you really are someone who always surprises others. Ethan. Odo-san, that means you broke your limits by using a lot of power, now your body must be stronger and more resilient. Issei. Ooh um I see, thanks on stroking Ethan's head and thanks for explaining this to me Michael, Azazel. 
the girls only saw Raynor with some annoyance, but they knew that before they had not attacked them of their own free will, and also that she had fallen in love with Issei long before being what she is now, and that gave them some confidence, but not enough to forgive her. From one moment to the next. Aden. But could that Kakabiel recruit allies that way? Azazel. Kakabiel uses his feathers to increase the strength of his allies, but I didn't know about using them to manipulate people. Maybe after this he will unfreeze him and get the rest of the information out of him, but for now, let them go rest, no one. Leaves Helheim, much less bringing the goddess of death with him. Aden. Well he's right, for now that he stays with the boy it seems that both signed a special bond he said, looking at Issei and Hela out of the corner of his eye. Issei. If it's okay, besides I wasn't going to let her be guarded or something like that by you looking at the goddess shall we leave. Offering his hand, Hela. Hey she said something blushing, Issei only took Hela and Raynor, and together with the other Olo they went home. Time skip each of Issei. Now we see Hela and Raynor eating Issei's mother's food while she looked happy. Isara. Ara, I'm surprised by the number of girls Issei brings home looking at both of them. You. Well he is the king of the harem. Hiba. Nothing can be done to him. Issei. You better stop calling me yes or else I'll hit you. Hela. It was delicious Mrs. Haidu leaving the plate empty, I had not had a meal like that in centuries. Raynor. Yes, it was delicious Oka Senshi said happily. Isara. It's nothing, besides your new members from now on in this house, so you can eat whatever you want. Yui. Except our ice creams. Lin. If they eat our ice cream we will kill them. Yuna. Yes, and in a very painful way. Lily. We're just letting you know they said serious and in chibi form. Hella. By the way, you're Issei Sama's children from the future, right? Looking at Yuna and Lily. Ethan. It was nice meeting you he said happily and with a big smile. Both women only saw the very great resemblance of Ethan and Issei and were able to confirm that he was their son. Issei. Whispering by the way, son, will they also be your mothers in the future? Ethan. Whispering I don't know, it seems like the timeline changed a little because of Loki, so I don't know what will happen now. Issei just sighed and caressed her son's head while she looked at both girls who, upon feeling and seeing that Issei was watching them, only looked away while they had a slight blush. Issei. A problem ends and a new one begins sigh well at least it's not that serious. Part 26 it's just to see you later. Issei was sleeping peacefully in the patio of his house under a tree with his son and daughters, after Hela Issei knew that Ethan and Yuna and Lily would have to leave, and that's why he would have to make the most of the time too to be able to be with your children. Hela. I see why this suits them she said, seeing Issei and the three little ones sleeping next to their other girls they look very cute she said with a small blush. Rias. Yes, since Ethan said that they had to leave last week, Issei has been very attached to the three of them. Azara. Well, they are his children, and although he knows that he will see them in the future when they are born, it must be something hard for him. Lin. I don't want Lily to leave either. Yui. Me neither, but it's the right thing to do, plus we'll see them again when they're born, and also seeing Issei with a perverted face, then we won't have to worry about Issei making an excuse fufufu. Akeno. Ara, Ara you are right Yui-chan, Ice Kun will totally succumb to us and will make us his in no time, just thinking about it will make me successful he said with a lustful smile and licking his lips. All of his girls blushed at what was said, but a certain albino of his felt sad and angry, and even more so when she saw Raynor. Yuri. And tell me. Looking at Raynor what are you doing here? Raynor. What's not obvious? I'm here because I will be one of Issei Kun's wives and no one will stop me. Yuri. Ha, we still haven't forgotten what you did to us so don't get excited. Rainer. And I haven't forgotten what you did to Issei, and he doesn't seem to either, since you're the only one he treats differently, less affectionate and more reserved, haha <laughs> so don't act like an innocent girl, because at least I maintain my chastity, and the only one who can take it away from me, is Issei he said proudly and looking arrogantly at the girl. They all remained silent although they still did not fully trust Rainer, she was right, she was the only one who was not affected by trying to seduce Issei, as if she were just a common girl to him, the albino just lowered her head and ran away. There and the fallen one had a victorious smile on his face. Asia. I think I'll give it to you a little bit, Rainer san, she really feels sorry for what she did, and she wants Issei san to see her again like before. Rainer. Maybe, but she earned it by opening her legs to another, if she really wants to earn Issei kun's forgiveness, then she will have to work much harder. The girls only saw Rainer, the girl was right, she was not manipulated like the fallen one, she did it knowing that it would break Issei's heart if he found out, and she still didn't care and succumbed to the temptation, and fell into infidelity, and as the saying goes, you eat what you sow, and in this case, Yuri only sowed resentment for his actions in Issei's heart. Change of scene, the mask can be seen sitting at a table looking at the amulet Hela gave them. Azazel. What shall we do now? If society finds out about this. Michael. Don't Ara, we will prevent it, but for now we will ask Hela the rest of the plans that Loki told her. Serzichas. That seems correct to me. 
change of scene, Issei could be seen with her girls while he watched as Yuna and Lily were riding on Garm and Ethan was on Cerberus chasing each other. Issei. They seemed to get along well watching how the three-headed wolf played with Hela's giant wolf, Hela. Of course, Garm found his male after all. Issei. Wait, you're saying that? Hela. Yes, Garm is female, and apparently when Cerberus and her fought in Helheim there was a connection, maybe she fell in love during the Cerberus fight. Issei. Well, I think it's a possibility while she watched how both dogs licked each other and bit each other gently, obviously judging. The boys were just relaxing, but he didn't know that certain girls saw him in a predatory way, especially a white-haired Nico. As Skip, throughout the day, Issei spent time with his children to spend as much time as possible with them, but certain girls had a plan for when the sun went down and everyone was asleep. Now we can see Issei sleeping peacefully alone in her bed, since Ethan is with her mother, and Yui and Lin are in the room of both little girls sleeping peacefully. Issei was only sleeping peacefully, but foreshadows were becoming dangerous, and the boy was predatory. Issei. MMMMMMM opening his eyes a little and tickling some tickles on his crotch, MMMM girls are you the boy opened his eyes completely and saw the twins next to Nico and Ravel, licking his member with vigor see girls, what are you doing? The cane. It's not obvious only Chan seeing a say with a smile and a blush, Sarah. It's not fair that I already do it with one Chan and but you, we wanted to. Ravel. Issei Kun said kissing Issei please, my belly is burning, put out my fire with his thing, said masturbating Issei's member with his hand, while the others licked it, an echo. Issei Kun, we want your children, please looking at Issei in the eyes, and the albino saw that his eyes were slanted, but had a heart design give me kittens kissing Issei. The boy couldn't take it anymore, and he succumbed to the temptation and pleasure that the girls gave him. Lemon skipped please read it on website. Issei only saw the four girls who previously abused him while he slept still conscious, and the boy just smiled again. Issei. It looks like I'll have a very good night today smiling evilly. Time skip next day. Issei was getting up normally, but in this case when he opened his eyes, he just hated seeing the four girls who previously abused him at night, totally tired and sleeping on Issei's chest. Issei carefully and without waking them up got up normally, and when he saw the time he paled, it was 3 in the afternoon, he really slept a lot, and he was still a little tired but relaxed from last night. The albino just sighed and went down to the living room. When I went down, Issei could only see Ethan playing with his three uncles in the living room, and his girls were talking in the dining room. Issei. Good morning, Rias. Good afternoon, it seems you slept a lot. Akeno. What? You couldn't sleep alone ice cun. Were you a little afraid of being away from your girlfriends? He said with a somewhat mocking smile. Issei. Yes, I think it was that. Yui. We're sorry, master, hugging Yuna and Lily is like hugging small stuffed animal she said, caressing the black-haired girl's head. Lin. Being with both of them is very nice, I never wanted them to leave possessively hugging her daughter. Issei. Me neither but they know they have to leave, they have a life in the future, and we can't let them stay here. Rias. Yes but. Issei just hugged her and placed a tender kiss on her forehead. Issei. Well, and maybe I'll reconsider having children at a young age. Rias. Really. Issei. Sigh maybe, but we can't appreciate things, we have to let things flow normally. Rias. Well, he's right, but that doesn't save you from having to please me later, she said with a flirtatious smile. Issei gave her a tender kiss and looked the repeat into her eyes. Issei. I know, and I wait for that day with open arms she said with a smile. The boys just started calmly, and when the four girls who had previously had a night of fun with Issei got up, the boys looked at them strangely, since she was limping and didn't want to sit anywhere, and when they saw Issei, they just looked like a tomato. Change of scene. In an albino's room you could see Yuri writing something on a piece of paper, and when she finished writing she just got up, took out her wings and went out the window, but not before whispering a few words. Yuri. Goodbye forever, my essay kun she said flying and disappearing. When she left him alone, she found a letter on her desk, and the letter said for me essay kun. Well I hope you like it a lot, give it a little star, and give it a lot of support if you want me to release the next chapter the same day. Let me know in the comments below if you guys want the next part. Also check out my other video that has been shown and left. Thank you for watching, if you enjoyed this video please like and share this video. And have a fantastic day bye.